All right, everybody. And just want to make sure we got everything together here. And once we get that started, we're going to um, get started. Eh? Amen. Good. We got everything together. We want to welcome you to the Sunday Law Update, where we update you on where we are as it relates to end time events for the book of Daniel and Revelation. And we also highlight in the spirit of prophecy exactly where we are in these last days. And brothers and sisters, we want to keep you updated every Sabbath on what's going on in the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And we just want to just thank God for all of you and those who are watching um, online overseas. We have a power pack program for you tonight. And then we're going to um, have a good time. Are you ready for the Sunday Law? Are you ready for the Sunday Law update? Hey, man. How many of you found out about State Line through the, the Sunday Law update? Oh, you already knew about us. All right. A amen. Amen. Well, what we're going to do right now, let us kneel right now for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer as we begin this Sunday Law update. We want to ask for the divine power of the Holy Spirit to rest upon us. We want to ask that you would bless this place with your presence and with your power, Lord, and give us your grace and your glory. We thank you, Lord, for the um, sound system, Lord, and we want to just ask that you would bless it, Lord, as we uh, worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Father in heaven, please forgive us of our sins and please give us a message from heaven, Lord. Please open our eyes as we hear your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. All right. Now, we want to just thank God for each and every one of you that are, is here tonight, um, this evening. And we want to um, get into the word of God. And we have a lot of things that we want to talk about. Now, one of the things that we must understand is to understand our mission. Amen. Our mission. And our mission is found in, of course, we know what the Bible says. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to how many creatures? Every creature. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the who? Holy Ghost. So our purpose is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the whole entire world. But the question is, what is the gospel that we're to preach the Bible gives us the answer in Revelation chapter 14. The Bible calls it the everlasting gospel, and it's also known as the three angels' messages. The three angels' messages. And let's look at Revelation chapter 14. Revelation, the 14th chapter. Revelation chapter 14. The Bible says, starting at verse 6, Revelation 14, and we're going to start at verse 6. The Bible gives us our commission. Now, today we're going to talk about a lot of things, but brothers and sisters, there was a controversy at the general conference last week that we must talk about. Do you understand this? And we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about what's going on in Jamaica. In Jamaica, brothers and sisters, and all of my family members and all of my church family that are watching in Jamaica, you know what's going on, but we're going to just let the people of God know because what we're seeing happening in one place is going to happen in a lot of places. Do you understand this? Now, the Bible says in Revelation 14 and verse 6, And I saw another angel fly where? In the midst of heaven. Having the what gospel? The everlasting gospel to preach unto them. The, the priest to the them that dwell on the where? The earth. And to every what? Nation and kindred and tongue and people. Why? Because what's getting ready to affect the world is going to affect every nation, every kindred, every tongue, and every people. So the gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world is the three angels' messages. Amen? Look at verse 7. It says, saying with a what voice? A loud voice. Fear God and give glory to him. You can't fear God and give glory to him unless you come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. So the first angel's message really gives us, really invites us to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord. And it says, for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And the Bible says that they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in what somebody? Truth. That means that we know 
gospel of the truth so we can worship him right. Am I right, somebody? And there are people who worship God ignorantly, but the message of the everlasting gospel is to bring people back in alignment with the truth. In verse 8, the second angel's message says, and there follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made it, oh, how many nations? All nations. But hold on, didn't the gospel to, is to go to all nations? That means the three angels' messages must go to all nations so that all nations won't worship Babylon. Amen? Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And in verse 9, it says, And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, where? In his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. And you know, it's been a hot week all over America. Am I right? And it's, but it's going to be hotter in hell, right? And just this week, there was a man that died in Death Valley, California. You know why? Because he ran out of gas. Man. Yes. And they found him dead. He died of heat, heat, stroke, heat exhaustion. But the Bible says that those that receive the mark of the beast will be tormented. What does the word torment mean? To cause extreme pain. With fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Verse 11 says, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor what? night who who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name but thank god the bible says here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and have the faith of who jesus it's commandment keeping important well god's people be keeping the commandments of god at the end of time yes because the bible says it right here yes They'll eventually die. Yes, there'll be no rest in the lake of fire, day nor night, until they die. Have mercy. That means at 3 o'clock in the morning, they're going to be burning. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they're going to still feel the same pain. That tells you intensely how God, watch this right here, does not want people to receive the mark of the beast. And remember, the Bible says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Am I right? So if you keep the commandments of God, it is impossible to receive the mark of the beast. Amen? Am I right? Now, think about it for a minute. Now, let's go to the Ten Commandments for a second. Now, do you know that if the Bible says if you break one commandment, you've broken all of them? So watch this right here. The Bible says in Revelation, now we're going to show you how, watch this right here, how people are going to break the first four commandments by receiving the mark of the beast. Let's look at Revelation 14, verse 9 again. It says, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the who? Beast. Now, by worshiping the beast, they'll be breaking the first commandment. It says, thou shalt have no other God's before me. So by worshiping the beast, they'll be honoring the pope. They'll, they'll be honoring popery above God. Am I right? They'll be breaking the first commandment. And notice this: those who worship the beast and his what image. And the Bible says, "Don't bow down and worship graven images." Am I right? So to receive the mark of the beast and to worship the beast in his image, you have to break the first and second commandment. Am I right? Now hold on. The Bible says, "Thou shalt not take the name." Of the Lord thy God and what? And vain. And if you read verse 10, the Bible says, those that receive the mark. Verse 11, whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Rather than taking the name of God, they'll be taking on the name of the beast, which will be in violation of the third commandment. And of course, they'll be violating the fourth commandment because the fourth commandment says, remember the what day? Sabbath day to keep it what? Holy six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Now, let me ask you this right here. Is it a sin to work on, the, on Sunday? Now, we know it's not a sin to work on Monday through Friday. Am I right? Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's not a sin to work on them days, right? 
But the Bible says, it didn't say five days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. It said how many days? Six days shalt thou labor. So that means it's okay to work on Sunday and it not be a sin. Am I right? But the Bible says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. The Bible says, for in six days the Lord made, what? Heaven and earth, the sea and all that in the midst, and rested the what? Seventh day. Wherefore, because he rested on the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Hold on now. What makes the Sabbath the Sabbath based on verse 11? Number one, he rested. Amen. And he blessed it. And then what else? He hollowed it. Am I right? He hollowed it, right? So that tells me that according to the Bible, that the only way that any day could be the Sabbath, God would have to have rested on that day. He would have to have blessed it and he had to have sanctified it. But did God bless every day? Did God rest on every day? No. So did God sanctify every day? No. So for those that teach the false doctrine that every day is the Sabbath, have you heard that before? Every day is the Sabbath. Well, to say that would be a lie because God did not do that to every day. Amen. He did it to only one day, and that is the seventh day. Am I right? So therefore, we know from the Bible that that's a fallacy. Am I right? So what happens is, now notice this. People say that Sunday is the Sabbath, but is Sunday really the Sabbath? No, because did God, did God work on Sunday or did he rest or did he do both? He worked all day long on Sunday. Did he rest on Sunday? Did he bless it? Did he sanctify it? Did he not do, did he not do it to the first day of the week? Which means that it is impossible for Sunday to be the Sabbath day. It is impossible. Now, Brother Palmer, what day were you born? What's your birthday? November 14th. It is impossible for any other day of the year to be your birthday. Am I right? Because of what took place. So what happens is what took place on the seventh day is only possible on the seventh day, which is Saturday. Now, is the Sabbath for the Jews? No. Was there one? How many Jews were there in the Garden of Eden? When, how many Europeans were in the Garden of Eden? How many Africans were in the Garden of Eden? None. So it was just one man and one woman, Adam and who? Eve, which was the father of everybody, right? So the Sabbath was made for everybody, amen? So the lie that every day is the Sabbath and that Sunday is the Sabbath and that it was given to the Jews is a lie because the Bible does not support it, amen? So therefore, the true Sabbath day is what day? Saturday, amen, which is today. And this is what we need to talk about. But the Richard, let's go to the screen right here because this thing has gotten so religious. I mean, it's gotten so religious. Look what it is right here. Does that look, doesn't that look very spiritual? Let me ask you a question. Doesn't that look spiritual? Yes, it looks, does it look refreshing? Does it look refreshing? Yes. But there's only one problem. It says Sunday what? It's not the rest day, am I right? But what happens is the devil, I mean, just keep it on the screen there. The devil has people believing that Sunday is the day of rest, right? But what happens is we know that Sunday is not the day of rest. We know that Sunday will be the mark of the beast, am I right? And we know that the Sabbath is the seal of the living God, am I right? Now, didn't the Bible say that the Sabbath was God's sign? Yes. In Exodus chapter 31, the Bible says that the Sabbath is a sign between me and the covenant people forever, right? Is the Sabbath a sign? Right. So what happens is the Sabbath, now in Romans chapter 4, 11, seal and a sign are synonymous, meaning, brothers and sisters, that the Sabbath is not only the sign of God, but it's also the seal of God. What do you say out there? Amen. But thank God. Now, notice this now. Did you know that each day right there carries the name of its author? Ellen G. White says in Testimonies, Volume 6, that each Sabbath institution bears the name of its author. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, you see the word Sabbath? In the middle of the word Sabbath, the Father's name is there. And what is the Father's name according to Scripture? Abba. Mark 15 says, Abba, Father. Uh, Romans 8, 15. 
And then in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says Abba, which means father. In the Greek, it means father. In the Hebrew, it means father. And notice the Sabbath carries the father's name right in the word. Am I right, somebody? So when we keep the Sabbath every Saturday, we are bearing the father's name before the whole entire world. Amen. But notice this right here. Sunday, the mark of the beast bears the name of its author. But hold on now. See, the devil always works in disguise. Am I right? He never comes out and just says who he is. But what is Satan's original name? Lucifer. And the root word for the word Lucifer is lux, which means light, right? And so the name Lucifer means light bearer. Uh-oh. So what? Watch this right here. Satan's original name means light bearer. And what did God make in the solar system that bears light? The sun. So Sunday, the name of Lucifer is in that. Did you see that? So Sunday is really Lucifer's day. Man, ooh. So Sunday's really Luciferian. Have mercy. It really is. The word, the name Satan means adversary. You may want to take that picture again. Yeah, well, you just take it one more time. So what happens is you, everybody needs to take their picture and just show it to your mom and your daddy. Amen. So watch this right here. Sunday really is Lucifer's day. Why? Because Sun, the, the Sunday really carries the name of its author, which is Lucifer, which means light bearer. And that's what the sun comes in. Do you see that right there? Am I right? So you have Lucifer's day and Christ's day. Have mercy. Which one are you going to choose? So and, and, and Ellen White says in Testimonies, volume six, that it is our work to lead the people to understand this. Do you understand this? Now, for those who are watching who are not keeping the true Sabbath, they know about it. We're not condemning you. We're just condemning the practice. Am I right, somebody? Of which you are worshiping on, but God wants you to come out of Sunday worship. Am I right? Amen. And so the, the purpose of this is to educate people because one day you're going to have to make a decision whether you're going to receive the seal of God or whether you're going to receive the mark of the beast. Now, somebody's asking, well, pastor, how did you get that Sunday's the mark of the beast? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Bible calls um, the mark of the beast the number 666, okay? Now, what you will find out is, and this is a fact of history, that this number was connected with sun worship, which according to scripture was the oldest abomination ever practiced by man. And so what happened was 666 was the sacred number of the sun god. And look at this right here. This is a solar medallion from the Roman Empire. And you see the sun on the front. And on the back, you have the numbers of the zodiac, which if you put it together from 1 to 36, it equals 666 six, what? 6. So what happened was is that this was the sacred number of the sun god, which was worshipped on Sunday, and that's the reason why, biblically, that Sunday worship, when enforced by a national Sunday law, will be the mark of the beast. Is that clear? Now, the beast power says, quote, Sunday is our mark of authority. What? Now, the Catholic Church is the beast power, the Antichrist. It says, and the church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Sunday is founded not of scripture, but on what, somebody? Tradition, and it's distinctly a what kind of institution? Catholic institution. Now, are you sure, Pastor? Well, Jesus died on Friday. He rose, the Bible says in the book of Mark, he rose on the first day of the week. Am I right? He rose on the first day of the week, which means the Sabbath day has to be the day before that. Was there any change after Jesus died? Absolutely not. So therefore, brothers and sisters, the national Sunday law will be Satan's deception to bring to the world that if we worship on Sunday, come together on Sunday, we can save the planet from destruction. But brothers and sisters, we're here to warn you, don't eat the forbidden fruit. What do you say out there? Amen. And so what happens is this. Uh, this is very serious, and we need to know that Sunday rest has no business being worshipped. But we know that one day there will be a union of church and what, somebody? State. I mean, it's right there in Revelation. The second beast power enforces religious worship, meaning that in order for that to happen, church and state will have to be united. Am I right? 
So what happens is, according to the last days, our religious liberties will be uh, taken away when church and state unites. Revelation 17 talks about the woman that controls the kings of the earth. And the only way the woman can sit on top of the beast and control the kings of the earth, they would have to have church and state united. And therefore, we're going to see something where Ellen White says, by the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy in violation of the law of God, our nation will disconnect herself fully from what, somebody? Righteousness. We know how this is going to come. Amen. And we're going to show you some stuff here because what's happening is and what's getting ready to happen, we're going to see some stuff um, come to place. Now, what happens is, as we talked about before, there's been a talk over the last couple of years of do we need to have a universal day of rest? And everybody who's a student of prophecy knows where this is going to come. And what's happening is, is that eventually all the nations are going to come together to join the Pope's agenda to enforce Sunday worship upon everybody. And when this happens, this will be the enforcement of the worship of the beast and his image. Now, Revelation chapter 13 says that the second beast power, which is the United States, will enforce the worship of the first beast through a Sunday law. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the Catholic Church plays a big part. And what we're getting ready to show you in a couple of minutes is how the whole world is going to join up with Rome to enforce the mark of the beast. And what we let you know is, is that everything is going to be, we're going to see the, what we're seeing now is the progressive fulfillment of Bible prophecy. But ultimately, it will be fulfilled to where Ellen White and Vision saw that the whole world was what? Converted. And in harmony with the what? Sunday law. And this is how scary it is. It's going to be so scary. Now, for Ellen G. White say, said to say here in the spirit of prophecy that the whole world was converted, what does that imply? It means everybody was doing. Now, imagine that she says the whole world was converted. What if she said the, 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 all of Huntsville was converted? Man, except for a few people. So understand this right here. The majority of the people on this earth are going to receive the mark of the beast. Did you know that? That includes people in our families. So that means you have to stand for the truth for yourself. Amen. If, if your husband receives the mark of the beast, are you going to receive it with him and go to hell? Yes. I had talked to my brother, and he said that he was born a Catholic. He was going to die a Catholic. We pray, that he, we pray that he don't receive the mark of the beast, right? Yes. So she said the whole world was converted. Did you hear that right there? And in harmony, she said the, how much of the world was converted? There it is right there. When she said the whole world's converted, how did Ellen G. White know? Because the Bible said that the woman would ride upon the beast and the waters of the earth. And look how much water she's sitting upon. A lot of water. Am I right? How many, how many drops of water would it take to fill all that up? Billions. Am I right? Look at that right there. How many drops of water would it take to, for her to ride upon? Billions. And that means that billions of people that walk on this earth are going to receive the mark of the beast. Do we have a work to do today, brothers and sisters? We have a work to do in these last days. So therefore, it is very important to tell the people the truth as it is in Jesus because we're getting ready to see a national Sunday law, brothers and sisters. And there's only one church that Satan is angry at who keep the commandments of God and has the testimony of Jesus Christ. And what church is that, brothers and sisters? Oh, come on now. What church is that? The Seventh Day Adventist. You know why? Why is Satan angry with the Seventh Day Adventist Church? Because we have the present truth, which is going to expose all of this. Remember what Ellen G. White said: Seventh Day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people, separate from the world. And notice what it says right here. And by the great cleaver of truth, he has cut them out from the quarry of the world, and it brought them into connection with himself. He has made them his representatives and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the last work of what, somebody? Salvation. Then it says, the greatest wealth of truth ever entrusted to mortals, the most solemn and fearful warnings ever sent by God to man, has been committed to them to be given to the world. Do you believe that? Yeah, and if we really believe that, then we'll start acting like we believe this. We have a big mission, and our mission is, is to stay away from the ecumenical movement. You hear that? You hear that? 
because the Catholic Church says the union of Christians can be only promoted by promoting to the return of the one true church of Christ, of those that are separated from it. In other words, the papacy believes that in order for everybody to come together, you got to come back to the mother. But look at this right here. Pope Francis in Laudato Si says to manage the global economy. Hold on now. Who's going to manage the global economy? It's going to be the Pope. Notice this, to revive economies hit by the crisis. Aren't we going through an economic crisis right now? Yes. Yeah. So what happens is this is just as relevant as this was written seven years ago. And to avoid any deterioration of the present crisis and the great imbalances that would result to bring about integral and timely disarmament. What does disarmament mean? Taking guns away. And aren't they talking about taking guns away? Yes. So this is very relevant. Food security and peace. Is there food insecurity going on right now? Has anybody seen the food not being on the bookshelves? Brother Wise, do you see that going on with the bookshelves? On, on, the, on, the, on the food shelves? You may not see it, but listen to this right here. And peace and to guarantee the protection of the environment and to regulate migration. For all of this, there is an urgent need of a true world political authority. And brothers and sisters, I think that this gas price thing, I think that this has been planned. I just think it is, brothers and sisters. I mean... For the last two years, we've been kept off balance. Have we been off balance for the last two years? Yeah. First it was COVID, then it was monkeypox, now it's the gas prices. Now it's everything going on. I mean, the stock market has gone down yeah. tremendously, am I right? People are losing bi billions of dollars are being lost. Do you understand this? So when things start happening, do you notice that people start coming together? Yeah. People start coming together. So Satan is instigating this, and brothers and sisters, this is in California. Can you imagine paying this much for gas, Sister Tiny? You probably wouldn't even go outside, right? They're like, I'd just, I'd rather just walk, right? But look what it says: seven, look, eight for premium unleaded. Boy, if you got a luxury car, I feel sorry for you, right? It says premium unleaded. Do you see this? Eight dollars and forty-nine cents. Can you imagine that, Sister Hall? I mean, Sister, Mr. Hall, Sister Palmer. Can you imagine that? You couldn't imagine that. That's too much money. Am I right? Man, I mean, just for one gallon of gas, you got to pay $8 to get it. Have mercy. Boy, the devil is manipulating everything. And brothers and sisters, he's manipulating it to bring about Sunday rest. Now, let me ask you a question. Let's be honest. Wouldn't it make more sense now if we just take one day a week off now than it was a month ago? Wouldn't it make sense to do that now? Take off, well, I know, but watch this right here. I, I know, I know, but watch it. Wouldn't it make sense now for them to say, let's just take a day off so we can get these gas prices down? You think people would do that? Oh, yes, they would. Yeah, there's some incentives behind it. If they said, let's think about it. Look, you know, let's just do what we did back in the 1970s when the gas prices were high. Let's just close down gas stations on Sundays. Let's just encourage people not to drive their cars on Sundays unless you're going, unless you're going to church. Because think about it for a minute. When uh, the mask mandate went out and we all had to wear masks in public, in Alabama, churches were exempt Remember that? Yeah. Right. So what happens if they say, look, let's just take a day off where we do nothing. We stay at home and we, 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 we uh, don't operate our cars unless you're going to church. Would that sound very attractive right now? Yeah. So understand this right here. Satan is creating the climate for Sunday rest to be accepted as what is called the law of attraction. All right, right. Remember that law of attraction theory we talked about? Remember that right here? The law of attraction. Four stages of the Sunday law. Number one would be the law of attraction, where they say refraining from working on what somebody? Sunday. Now, this is the easiest part of Sunday enforcement. You won't enforce it. You just start encouraging it. Do you understand this right here? To where, number one, do you start encouraging people to rest? And notice this. We showed it to you earlier today. And we talked about it where they talk. They're already talking about um, car-free Sundays, right? Right? 
Why, can, why can't they have car free on any other day? But what happens is we know it's seven day Adventist where this is headed. But it's not going to stop right there. And then it's going to be a more it's going to be a more decided push to honor it. They're going to say, look here, we're going to just ask you since it's the Lord's day, since it's the Sabbath, we're just going to encourage everybody to go to church and worship and reverence this day. We know what we need to do. We need to make Sunday a national holiday. Have mercy. Think about it for a minute. Is Christmas a national holiday? Is it observed? Yes. yes. It's the 4th of July national holiday. Then why can't they make Sunday a national holiday every week? Man. What if they start, what would you do if they start saying, we're going to make Sunday a national holiday? You better not, we, we don't, we're not going to go along with it, right? <laughs> All right. But guess what? If they, if they know who hasn't been vaccinated, who hasn't gotten the jab, they're going to know who's not worshiping on Sunday, right? Look at this right here. And then guess what? It's going to get so bad, they're going to say, you must honor Sunday or you will face fines and imprisonment. And didn't it get to a point where they were pushing uh, uh, the jab? Am I right? Remember they were pushing it to where people would get penalized? To where you lose your job? And in some places, you couldn't go in certain restaurants to buy. And if you wasn't going to do it, you couldn't sell, right? You saw Sunday Law Jr. last year, am I right? But watch this right here. You must honor Sunday. It's going to get progressively worse. Do you understand this? And then when it starts happening, what's going to happen to all them folk that said, well, Dr. O and people like that were just conspiracy theorists. They're going to say we were telling the truth all along, right? Somebody's going to have to apologize, right? But look at this right here. And then it's just going to say, look, death penalty to all Sabbath breakers. Flee to the mountains. Do you understand this right here? This is how bad it's going to get to where we're going to have to flee to the where, somebody? To the mountains. That means there will be no safe place here on planet Earth. Even I and those of us that live in the country, we're going to have to leave our country homes. Am I right? We have to go to the mountains. But what if uh, all of us that live in the city? You got to leave your city home. Am I right? Let me ask you a question. That's why you're going to be thrown out. When you leave your home, say if you, say if you live in an apartment or a house, are you going to lock the door? Are you going to lock the door? You, you, are you going to lock it? Are you going to lock the door when you leave? Are you going to do it? You better not. Why? Why would you lock the door? You're not coming back. <laughs> You're just going to leave it open, right? I mean, I'll close the door, but I'm, I'm not locking it. Let me ask you this. When Jesus says, go to the mountains, what about your pets? Jesus says, do not take anything not even your pets, out of your house. Now, it's easier said than done. How many of you have pets? When it comes time to flee to the mountains, how many, how many of you, if you could take your pet, you'll take your pet? I would, if I could. Now, what, what am I going to do to my cat? What am I going to do? I'm just going to say, Jessica, I love you, but I must go. <laughs> and that is her name, amen. And I got, that cat is sweet, too. Boy, that's a sweet cat, too. But guess what? Jesus says, you got to love every, you got to love me more than anybody, including your pets. Am I right? Am I right? So let me ask you this. When the time of trouble comes, it comes time to flee to the mountains. Are you going to take your, your photo album with you? Why not? Don't you want to take the memory? You got to leave it. I mean, think about it. For, you got to leave it all behind. Amen. You can't, don't take anything, Jesus says, out of your house. Because you know how we are. We want to start packing. So do we carry a suitcase? Now, let me ask you a question. Will you carry your cell phone with you? Well, that's, it won't work, right? Would you carry it anyway, right? Well, it'll probably be in your pocket, so you'll probably be able to carry it with you. <laughs> huh, would you say? Yes. It's still a tracking device, right? So how many of you are going, going to leave yourself? How many, okay, let me be honest with you. How many of us are going to really be able to leave our cell phones at home for real? Some of you can do it, but some of us are glued to our cell phones. It's like your, it's like your Siamese twin, right? Yeah, that's, like, that's, our, that's our Siamese twin, those cell phones. But listen to this right here. When it comes, stage one, what stage did I say? Refrain, they're going to tell you, just refrain from working on Sunday. Day of rest, encourage. Notice this right here. Before they make it required, they have to always encourage it. Am I right? Remember they thought it was encouraging the jab? 
then they started making it that you have to get it. So it's going to be the same thing. But what happens is Ellen G. White says on that day, we should use that for missionary labor. Am I right, somebody? So let me ask you this right here. Should we have Sunday services in the morning time on Sunday when the Sunday law comes? Absolutely not. I will not be here on Sunday morning. Do you understand this right here? All right. Now, I know what she says about having religious services, but we're not doing it on Sunday morning. Amen. And so what happens is this. One day a week, every week, just do nothing. Take a weekly day of rest. Make it a real Sabbath for you for the earth. Don't drive, don't shop, and don't build. This is stage one, brothers and sisters. And, and, and let me say this. I cannot, I cannot with accuracy tell you exactly when all this is going to come, but I'm here to let you know it can happen any time from now. The stock market prices are going down. Crypto prices are going down now. Everything is going haywire. Yes. Oh, you can do, I'll do Sunday night meetings, but I'm not doing it on Sunday morning. Amen. We should abstain from the appearance. <laughs> Amen. So we're not going to be having Sunday morning services to bring non-Adventists. We're just going to have to come in the afternoon. Amen. Amen. Now, if we did anything on Sunday morning, we'll come together and have some medical missionary classes and some evangelism classes. Amen. Oh, and we're going to have, we have some prayer, and we're going to try and reach these people with the truth, but we're not having no Sunday worship here at State Line. What do you say out there? Amen. Amen. Because pretty soon, he's going to come after you. <laughs> he's going to get you. The boogeyman going to get you, right? And this is going to happen. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, for the vision is yet for a what time? A point in time. When is that time? Nobody in this room knows. Nobody who's watching this program knows. But the Bible says, but at the end it shall what? Speak and not lie. Though it tarry, the Bible says, do what, somebody? Wait for it. So what must we do? We must wait for it because it sh will surely come. The Sunday law is going to come and it will not what? Terry. So therefore, we're right. The Pope is the Antichrist. The Pope is the beast power. The whole world's going to wonder after him, and we're going to have to tell the whole world the truth as it is in Jesus. Now, brothers and sisters, and of course, spiritualism is going to play a big part where the three unclean spirits like frogs will be released. So people are going to be deceived into going along with this. And brothers and sisters, we're going to see prophecy being fulfilled pretty soon right before our very eyes. Now, Brother Richard, can you just take it off of the screen right quick? Just take it off of the screen right quick because brothers and sisters, we're going to see a Sunday law pretty soon in the news. Amen? So therefore, what is our work at Seven Day Adventist? What must we do? We must give the loud cry of the third angel's message. Am I right? So must we compromise? No, we can't afford to compromise. Amen. And we're going to have to uh, be able to stand firm against all this apostasy that's going on. Because let me tell you this right here. There's a lot of stuff going on and we need to talk about it. Am I right, somebody? Now, what we're going to do is this right here. We're going to uh, we're going to uh, show you some stuff that's going on. Uh, because um, at the last general conference session, which was last week, there was a controversy concerning a flag, right? All right. Now, what we want to do is this. Before we get ready to show this to you, we're going to, um, tell, we're going to talk about uh, uh, what happened last week with this flag. Because, brothers and sisters, let me tell you this right here. Um, we're, going to, we're going to talk about it. We're going, to, we're going to walk you through this right here, okay? And we're going to talk about it because we as seven day events, we have state line, we have a three angels flag. Amen? We have a flag for the three angels' messages. Um, it's right there. Right there in the back, right there. Amen. Amen. That's the old flag. But we have a flag flying right outside. Now, a flag is almost like a mascot. Am I right, somebody? It's almost like a mascot. It rep what does a flag represent, my sister? What does a flag represent? Um, the emblem or the nation. A flag. What does a flag represent? It's a standard. It's what your um, country or your army um, represent. Am I right, Brother Palm? Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah, so a flag represents something. Am I right, somebody? And so let's go to the screen, Brother Richard. 
we're going to talk about something that happened at the GC last week. Now, this to me does not, does not take away from Elder Wilson's sermon because Elder Wilson's sermon was powerful. It was powerful. If you did not see Elder Wilson's sermon from last week, you need to watch it. Now, the Vatican flag was flown at the 61st General Conference session in St. Louis. You see that right there. It was flown there. It, w it was flown. It was, so fl it was flown so bad, I, 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 it gave me a headache when I saw it. I don't know. And it's not the first time they've flown a flag. Uh, at the 2010 GC in Atlanta, they were flying the flag. Now, what happens is, in all fairness, so what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, give a, a report on this because this was a controversial subject at the GC uh, on social media. Now, watch this right here. Now, what happens is this right here. At the uh, general conference session, one of the last ceremonies they have, they have what is, ha they have what's ha they have what is called a flag ceremony. To, and it's a flag ceremony to where it's in two parts. The first part is displaying the flags where the Adventist church has a presence. And then lastly, they have it where the seventh day Adventist church does not have, has not entered and they have not reached yet. Do you understand this? Now, behind, you see that? Yellow and white flag? That's the, that's the flag for the Vatican. Now, somebody says, is the Vatican flag the same as the Italian flag? The answer is no. But yet, Vatican City is in the same country. So, wouldn't it have been better for them just to put an a Italian flag? Yeah, which would have covered the Vatican. I would have had no problem with it. But brothers and sisters, on social media, boy, I, it was an argument. Man, it had people that were vehemently against it there were people that were in the middle and there were some people who was like i don't see nothing wrong with it but what we're going to do is we're going to talk about it at state line can we talk about it amen now let me say this to you this does not um change my allegiance um to, to um it does not change my desire to to work for the seven day Adventist church i'm still going to be a seven day Adventist. they can do whatever they want am i right but they got the answer to god for it but we, what, what we're going to do is we still need to talk about it Within the United Nations, Vatican is seen as a country. Mm. Vatican is city is a country. So that was the justification. So the Vatican is technically a country, but I'm a, I'm gonna work with this because I, I put this all together for all of y'all to hear today. Listen, to, look at this right here. Now behind him is North Korea. All right. And as you see at the door, it says, pray for North Korea, because North Korea has not been reached with the everlasting gospel, okay? And I, because it's communist, but notice this. You see the, you see that crown with them two keys on there? So this is a Vatican flag, okay? This is the flag representing Vatican City. Now, it does not mean that the young man who's carrying it is from the Vatican, but nevertheless, listen to this. Here it is. Do you see that right there? I mean, you see it right there. Now, brothers and sisters, when I saw it, I had a question. Why are they allowing a Vatican flag to be flown at a general conference session. A meeting of seven day events. Now, somebody explained to me what Ted Wilson said, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what the president of the GC said, okay? And we're going to just take this and break this down. Yes. You know, I, I think that the individuals who are involved in that, they, they have good sense. That flag is there because they really didn't know that it was a Vatican flag. I'll you don't give think them, they knew? I don't think they you knew. Okay, what if we were to go to one of their programs with the uh, Adventist flag? They know what's seven. Oh, I'm going to prove to you. I'm going to prove it to you. They know what we believe. Mm -hmm. I'm going to prove it to you. Okay, what you want to say? It seems like to me that these are like the signs that the seven-day Adventists at the conference, it, like to me personally, like that's a sign they're compromising already. 
Yeah. And see, and that's the reason why I was very upset about it, because what happens is the Bible says, don't let your good be evil spoken of. Let me say that before. Don't let your good be evil what? Spoken of. The reason, the, the explanation for why this Vatican flag was flown at the GC session may quote unquote be good, but it has been evil spoken of. I've seen people on the left. I've seen people on the right. I've seen people in the middle on social media talk about it. There have been videos about it. And there's one offshoot group in the Caribbean. Man, they just, in essence, said, see, the church is Babylon because of this. And so what happens is, for me, if I was a leader, I'd be like, look, we're going to leave that flag out. Amen. That's me personally. The reason why, because I don't want nobody saying anything negative about the good that I'm trying to do. That's me personally. Okay. Now, oh, we're going to work on this. We may be talking about this for another hour. You understand? This is going to be good. This is going to be good, y'all. What you want to say? I just want to say, remember the commission, go ye therefore into all the world. So I think it applies to them. Yeah. So what happens is going into all the world. So I'm, I'm going to let you see the video because, see, I'm not going to tell you what I heard. I'm going to tell you what they said. OK. And to me, uh, you know, it's what it is. Now, watch this right here. I'm going to show you something. Watch this right here. All right. Let me start from the beginning. Hold on one second. <laughs> So what happens is this right here. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. Do you understand this? What you want to say? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's fine. I'm, I'm sure it's been taken to him already. All right. <laughs> Trust me, people talk, okay? Now, um, Richard, can you take it off of the screen right here? Take it off of the screen. Now, this is at the GC session here. We're going to show you in just a minute. Um, and we're going to show you the other video that was played. And then I got some questions to ask you. And then we, we're going to make a point in just a second. Now, what happens is this right here. Um, let me, now, would it be okay for us at State Line to put the Vatican flag here? No. No. What if I said, well, the reason why is because we want to reach, but they haven't been reached with the Adventist message yet. What would you tell me? Okay, would it, okay let me ask you a question again. Would it be okay for me as the pastor of State Line to have the, the Vatican flag? Uh, why? I'm, uh, now listen to this right here. Can two walk together? Can two walk together so they be agreed? Brother Cliff, can, can Brother Cliff, can, can you? Yeah, yeah. I want to hear what you got to say. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube, can you tell me why would it not be okay? <laughs> for why would it not be okay, Brother Keller? Why would it be okay, not okay, for us to have a Vatican flag? And let me just say this to you: by the grace of God, I will never bring the Vatican flag up in here. Never. Period. Do you understand this right here? For no reason whatsoever. Go ahead. And you, what you said is true. It says two cannot walk together except they be what? Agreed. So if I put the Vatican flag in there, then that makes it look, it makes it look like I support it. And see, what happens is, let me tell you, it's unfair, but people judge things not by what it is, but how it looks. Am I right? Go ahead. Well, what comes to my mind is in Job, when all the sons of God came together. Yes. And Satan came in among them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the picture that I see because Satan, I, I think in the, the world's eyes, um, the institution that represents Satan needs to be in their face. It needs to be, because a lot of people think, oh, they're harmless. They're, they're you know, they're, they're docile, they're nice, they're kind. But as time goes forward, people are going to see the true nature. Right. 
Somebody just said here on YouTube, somebody says, does, does, do we have any Seventh-day Adventist people who currently live in the Vatican City? The answer is no. You cannot work in the Vatican City unless you work there. Yeah. The, the only residents are the popes and the cardinals. You go online, it tells you who lives in Vatican City. Go ahead. And so, okay, now, and, that, and that's going to lead me to the next question because, the, the, because I'm going to let you hear what the president of the General Conference said, okay? Um, what was the reason behind it? Now, let me just say this to you. I can only go by what he says. Do you understand this right here? And that's all I can go by. Yes, my sister. Um, I believe, even though they said that, you know, the Vatican City probably was not evangelized as yet, I believe that every single person in the Vatican City, because it's just the house, they know a lot about Adventism. I believe that they read, they study, and they already have infiltrations. So they know a lot. And they, they probably just, um, you know, play like they don't know. All right. Now watch this right here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go to the video where we talk about this, okay? Now, now when, we, when we go to this video, now, and let me just say this to you, um, I mean, that's, that's between them and God to do that. Now, personally speaking, I don't believe it was wise. I don't believe it was, ne and I believe it was just somebody even here on YouTube said it was too, it was controversial to do that. Am I right, somebody? It just would be controversial to do that. Am I right? And some, the Bible says that all things, Paul says, all things to me are lawful, but all things are not what? Expedient. So was it, was it lawful? It was perfectly okay. I, even then, I don't think it was lawful. That, and, and because of what we believe, right? But watch this right here. Uh, even, if it, even if your intention was lawful, we want to just display the countries that have not been reached in a meaningful way with the Adventist message. Was it expedient? Brothers and sisters, we're going to show you why it wasn't. Now watch this. Brother Richard, let's go to the screen here. We're going to show you what happened. I'm going to let you see what they said. Brother Richard, you can thank you very much. Girl is saying, boy. And write your story. You're going to see them come on the stage in just a second, okay? Let me just let it play. And while it's playing, we're just letting you know what's happening. What's going to happen is you're going to see these flags um, march on the stage of the countries that have not been reached with the, with the Adventist message, okay? And while it is legitimately, I'm, Sister Daphne, I'm glad you came inside. You came for the good part. While it, it is legitimately true that these countries have not been um, reached, there's only one that I have a doubt about a reasonable doubt that, what, that they, whether they've been reached or not. Now, here it comes right here. You're going to see it right here. You're going to see the um, flags come here. And I know it's taking a long time to get here. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. As you see, the Vatican flag is on your far right. Now, for those of you, if you can see my cursor, if you see my cursor, this is the Vatican flag, okay? Now listen to this. And that's the, that's the Vatican flag right there, okay? You see the Vatican flag right there? You see the Vatican flag right there? All right, so it's just showing you this. Now, the, okay, Sister um, Brother Cliff? Yeah, for the young lady, she has a question. As you see, you see the man with the Vatican flag, okay? Now, we're going to make a point about this because this is very important. Uh, man, we, we got a lot of comments on here. Have mercy. All right. Now, Sister Rogers, do not be discouraged. For those of you online, there's no need to be discouraged about this, because we're going to make a point in just a second. Yes? I just wanted to make a comment. Reached and awareness are two different things. There are countries that legitimately have not been reached, but to say that they're not aware, 
that's, that's a different story. And so that's something I think that needs to be considered again for them to even have it represented. I feel like, okay, and I'm sure even some within probably have been reached and have left. Right. Um, but I believe that definitely there's an awareness. It's just too much um, things that have come out. Well, I'm going to answer that question in just a second. Hold on. Keep watching. I don't know about you, but I was excited to see all those flags and names of countries coming through. What a wonderful worldwide Adventist family we belong to. In scripture, we are reminded in the book of Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, extremely familiar verses to you, but let me read to you, beginning with the middle of verse 18. Jesus is speaking. These are the words of our Savior, the greatest missionary of all time. And Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What a challenge to go. I will go. You will go. We will go. Before you, you see the flags of countries that are yet to be reached in a very meaningful way. All right. Did you hear what he said? So that's inclusive of the Vatican flag. They have not been reached in a meaningful way. Okay, I want you to remember that, okay? Because I'm about to make some points here that we need to really think about, okay? Now, I believe that that's what Ted Wilson's intention is. I have, I don't believe that there was any sinister uh, 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 intent of him having that Vatican flag there. That's just based on his understanding. But being a minister, understand this, and being a Christian, leaders do make mistakes. Am I right, somebody? There have been times where I have said things in the pulpit where some of you have come to me and said, Pastor, and some on YouTube said, you probably should not have said that. You're not, I'm like, yeah, you're right. I should not have said that. I made a mistake. Do you understand this right here? So when I talk about this right here, um, do I believe this is a deliberate mistake? I don't believe it was. Now, with all the other countries, I don't have a problem with those other countries, but the one flag, the one flag I have a problem with is the Vatican City. And I'm going to tell you why. Yes, um, can you, yes, my sister and then the hymn. Um, Brother Richard, you can take it off the screen now. I'm, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you why, okay? And I'm gonna come back to Ted Wilson at the end of this message. Sister, go ahead. From my understanding, the Lord called us peculiar. We're special. We're a holy nation. Another part in the Bible, he speaks of how he's going to destroy the enemy. We know that this um, head, the system works through the devil, and the devil is the enemy of God. If we are really to reach the Vatican, then I would not be believing in Revelation 17 and 18. All right, and then we're going to explain this, and we're going to break this down. Yes, Pastor, there we go. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think that what we're seeing here uh, that happened at the uh, general conference is that um, we know that Lucifer, the devil, Satan, is never going to be converted. Mm. And so therefore, everything that we do, we must never let it appear as though we are countenancing or we are... Yeah. 
Yeah, we, exactly. we, we are advocating now that we can change him. Right. We're never going to change the Vatican. But they must still be evangelized. Yeah, we're never going to do that. Right. So therefore, we, we have actually um, you may not exposed leave. our... We've actually made a, uh, a, a tactical or a strategic mistake. Mm. which the devil is going to exploit, and we should never give him that opportunity. And, and this is kind of going back, because see, had this Vatican flag not been put out there, then those who are in, the enemies of our faith that claim to be Adventists, those who hate the church, those who call the church Babylon, and those who make these arguments, we should not be a part of the Adventist church, would not have used God's social media time to criticize it. Do you understand this right here? Now, this does need to be critiqued. Do you understand this? And, and, and so, you know, somebody said this, that maybe there's a small Adventist contingency in the Vatican City. You find the names of those people and let me know. But um, you go ahead. A few things I want to say. Um, and this might be immaterial to whatever, but um, I don't know how we obtain a flag I don't know if money was involved, but to me, it was just for display. Honestly, I don't think God needed that. Secondly, so I wouldn't have wasted the money. I wouldn't have wasted the time. There, is, there could be pride with you parading in front of all those people. You don't know what was going on in those individual minds, having so many eyes on them. The, the devil could take advantage of that. So I don't know what was the purpose of that. Then, you know, let's say you're my enemy, which is not by the grace of God, and you have, you want to come and invade my house, and you put it right in front of everyone. That's number one, you, you have now caught my attention, right. right? So, you know, they could sit there looking and, oh, they intend to come and invade us here. So let's double, as a matter of fact, who are those people? Find out what they do and see how you can catch them so to speak. So I think that, like you said, it wasn't very wise, and um, I don't think for any reason it was, it was like a, a thought out thing. It was necessary to me, and you're right, right. it does bring that. Right. I see the hands, hold on, let me make this point that I get your hands. So brothers and sisters, let's go, let's go to the screen, brother. I'll get your hands, just hold it. You can put your hand down. I'll get, you, I'll get back with you. All right, because Okay, one of the things we got to understand that prophetically there is a Catholic agenda. Am I right? The prophetic inspiration has told us there is an agenda. Am I right? And what is that agenda? The agenda is right here. It says the Rome, Great Controversy, page 565, 566 says the Roman church is far reaching in her plans and modes of operation. She is employing every device to extend her what? Influence, influence Ladato C and increase her what? Power and preparation for fierce and determined conflict to regain control of the world, which Revelation says they will do. Am I right? To reestablish persecution and to undo all that Protestantism is what? Done. Now that's the agenda. I'm gonna raise somebody. So when I see the Catholic flag, the only thing I can think of is this. Am I right, somebody? And what they're trying to do to me, am I right? I'm about to make a point in just a second. And all those who raise their hand, I'm going to get back to every single last one of you. So when I see this flag, I think about what God has already told me. Am I right? And that the denomination that I'm a part of, hold on, I got you. I'm going to get everybody. Okay, let me just make this point. Okay, then you can, we will, we'll get to every single one of you. When I see this flag, I think of that agenda and that agenda only. Am I right? That's what it represents. Am I right? Now, I had to do some research, and I'm going to show you some stuff, okay? So this is the Vatican flag, okay? Now, watch this right here. Now, this is the Vatican flag right here. On this flag here, and let me tell you, the, the two major colors is yellow and what? White. And you have two keys, and you have the Pope's crown. Am I right? right. Now, what happens is, I did some research, and guess what I found out? I'm going to tell you what it means. Now, did you know that the yellow and the white means the civil power and the religious power? See? See, flags have meanings. Oh, it's about to get, it's about to get sticky up in here in just a minute. Now, watch this right here. If you got to use the bathroom, just wait till this Sunday law update is over. The gold, the gold key, because you have a, this is the gold key. The gold key represents the spiritual power, 
And the silver key, which is this one, represents the what? Church and what? State. Combined. There it is right there. All right. Now watch this right here. The silver key always points towards the yellow band of the flag. So this is pointing towards this for a certain reason. That's strategic. Did you know that? It says, quote, the silver key always points towards the yellow band of the flag, unlike the Holy See's coat of arms, which the reverse is true. A red cord connects the two keys. Uh-oh, you see that? Wow, I didn't even notice that. See, everything has significance. The red cord, why red? Huh. The red cord connects the two keys, which according to Vatican, their website, Vatican.da, alludes to the bond between the two powers, spiritual and the worldly power. Church and state. Revelation 17, 18, the woman rides upon the kings of the earth. So, brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. So, this flag, this, this flag is symbolic of the very thing that Revelation and the spirit of prophecy has prophesied of the coming papal takeover of the world. Oh, I know hands are going to go up. I need you to hold. I need you to give me five more minutes. Give me five more minutes. <laughs> and then, boy, just, just a, I'm glad the people, look, man, I see all the comments going on on social media right now. Woo, let me continue on. But guess what I found? The papal coat of arms and the banner were red with two cross gold keys, referred to the keys mentioned in the New Testament, and symbolizing either the assess that St. Peter was given to the kingdom of heaven or the papal claims to what? Dominion. Dominion over spiritual and temporal matters. So this flag, brothers and sisters, is symbolic of the papal control that they want to have, brothers and sisters. That, that, did God say it's going to happen? Did God say it's going to happen? So will Rome change? The Bible says, can a leopard change their spots? No. So what happens is the, the leopard-like beast will not change. Am I right? Now, do they need to be reached? They already have been reached. They're more than just aware. They have been reached. I'm going to prove it to you in just a minute. Hold on now. So this is what I found out. So hold on. Before I go any further, before I go any further, don't tell me that a flag don't mean nothing. Because in America, there's two flags that mean a lot. And I'm going to ask you a question. We all black, we black and white in here and on YouTube. We all love each other. Am I right? Amen. Do I love you, my white sister? You're not my white sister. You're my sister that happens to be white. Amen. She's my soul sister. Amen. 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 D -d Does these flags mean anything to you? Oh, yeah. I'm going to leave it up there. Do these flags mean anything? Yeah. All right. Do these flags mean anything? Now, which one should we start with? Should we start with the rainbow or the one with the X? <laughs> which one is this? I, me and Pe Brother Pennington had a talk today. Now, let's start with the rainbow flag. When you look at that flag, it has, really, it's more than one meaning to it. Now, the original rainbow meant God won't destroy the world by a flood. But in the 21st century, nobody's thinking about what God said to Noah. They're thinking about only one agenda, and that is the what agenda? The LG, you know what, agenda. Am I right? That flag represents an agenda. Am I right, somebody? Am I right? Is the agenda working? Yes, it's working. So that flag means it. But look at that red, white, and blue flag. Unfortunately, it's not the American flag. But it is called the what flag? The Confederate flag. And for everybody here that's converted, not just black, but converted, that you know that that's a no-no. Can I bring that flag up in here? Hold on. Let me bring the rainbow up in here. Well, that doesn't mean gay to me. That just means God's going to um, not destroy the earth by a flood. If I brought a rainbow flag up in here, you better call the conference and tell them to fire me. Am I right, somebody? Oh, could you do that? In, could you fly that in Jamaica? Come on now. Can, can you fly in Jamaica? Can you do it, my sister? No. No, can't find no flag in Jamaica. No, they will kill me. Am I right? Now, in New York City, you can do that with no problem. Hold on one second. In Washington, D.C., you can do that with no problem. But if you flew that flag in certain countries in this world, they would, you know what? Why? Because it's an agenda that goes against 
God. But let me ask you this. Does that confederate flag mean anything to you? It means only one thing. It means racism and slavery. A couple of years ago, in something had happened where you saw all these confederate flags popping up at houses all over in where we at right now. Now, if I was doing door-to-door -door ministry, doing cold portal work, and you being a black man or a black person, you saw a confederate flag, oh man. You, you may still knock on the door, I'm a realist, I'm like, Lord, protect me, Lord. <laughs> I may get shot, I may get lynched. <laughs> well, hold on, if it was 1952, and you were knocking on doors here, and you were black, you better just not go. Somebody says, I'm still going to go, right? Yeah, we won't see you no more, right? Now, so what does the Confederate flag mean to you? It means an agenda, am I right? It means a racist agenda. But what if somebody says, that don't really mean, that doesn't mean racism to me. That just means, look, man, I just love the South. And let me tell you, I love living in the South. It's warmer, people are more friendlier, so there's good things about the South. So somebody, what if somebody said, that doesn't really mean, you know, I don't really care if they put that flag here at the church or at my, at some, at my house. If you came to my house and saw a Confederate flag, you're like, that Dr. O don't live there, right? <laughs> am I right? So flags do mean something, am I right, somebody? They symbolize agendas, am I right, somebody? So I'm not a conspiracy theorist, I'm not an alarmist, I'm not even being fanatical about this when I say that if those two flags mean something, then this definitely means something, am I right? Am I right? Now, Sister Daphne missed this. Let me ask you this. Sister Daphne, when you see these two flags, <laughs> what does that mean to you? You can talk in the mic. What, what is the rainbow? Does that mean, oh, God's not gonna destroy the earth by flood? No, that's the LGBTQ whatever, whatever flag. It is. And yes. it, would it be okay to bring that in the church? No. Well, we, we got to reach him with the gospel. We we would have to definitely talk about that if we brought it in. See, it caused too much controversy, right? It, it would because you'd have to really state we're not allowing the enemy to take God's symbol. Right. We're yeah. keeping it. But still, to put it it's up as a flag would be it's an It's just caused too it much questions. Cause trouble. Yes. Now, what about that Confederate flag? Oh, Confederate flag would not work. <laughs> but you're judging people. That don't mean that. Like, I'm a Southerner, too. Uh -huh. I like living in the South. I've been living in the South almost all my life from Washington, D.C., which is the, by the Mason-Dixon line. Look, I've been living in the Mason South of Mason-Dixon since 19-whatever, mm -hmm. and I just love the South. So that flag does not mean what other people may want to mean. What would you say to that? Be like, I'm sorry. Thank you. Because, the, you know, the South is, it, it, this is a beautiful place. Yes. All that. But that flag was, symbolizes a time of mm -hmm. rebellion, a time of enslaving right. um, black people. And exactly. so while this may mean something good to you, if it's hurting me, now it's that thing needs me. to calm down. So guess what? If that hurts me, then this hurts me. This, this hurts me too. And it hurt me to see that being flown at a session. Now, granted, now, hold on now. Okay, here's where it's going to get sticky. Here's where it's going to get good. All right, the reason stated for the Vatican flag at the GC flag ceremony with the other national flags, it, you heard Ted Wilson said, to depict the nations not yet reached with the Adventist message in a meaningful way. He said that. Did he say that? Now, okay, if the Vatican flag had not been there, I'd have been cool with that. Do you understand this? But the Vatican flag being there, brothers and sisters, that, are you leaving? Are you leaving? Okay, don't leave. You got to stay till 10 o'clock tonight. But watch this. <laughs> we, 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 one day we're going to do a national Sunday law update marathon. We're just going to run for like six hours. <laughs> I, ho I hope you want to stay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we should do that. I'm getting ready to come up with a website called the Sunday law update. We can come up with our own website on that, but we'll try to get it up next week. So, question for observation. Question for what, somebody? Observation. observation. So, we need to talk about this, okay? Question for observation. Huh? Oh, okay, oh, okay, just let me make the point, then we're going to get everybody, because I saw like five, seven hands, and so that's a lot. Okay, now watch this right here. All right, we'll give you a chance. But watch this right here. Question for observation. Question. Are you ready for the question? You know how to be saying in board meeting. Are you ready for the question? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Question. Would Vatican City, if reached in a meaningful way, with the Adventist message, as was stated by Elder Wilson, would they allow Seventh-day Adventism to set up shop within our borders, i.e. SDA churches, SDA schools, etc., as like we do in reached countries? Would they do that? The answer, okay, what do you think? Does anybody say yes to that? Okay, because they say, because when you say reach, what do you mean by reach? Does it mean that they heard reach or you reach where they, people get converted? Even if there was one seven-day Adventist living there, would they allow that one seven-day Adventist to set up shop in the Vatican City? But hold on now. In every seven-day, you cannot reach a country unless you have a publishing house. Would they have a publishing Adventist book center or a publishing ministry in Vatican City? The answer is no, 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 a thousand times no, because it would be a what? Conflict of interest with Vatican City because of their prophesied end time agenda according to Daniel Revelation. Am I right? Hold on, I see the hands. Okay, when I say the hands can go up, then you're going to have the hands go up because I got to make a point here, okay? Because I'll be here for another hour before I get there. But watch this right here. Is this, am I right? The Vatican would be that would be that would be a dumb move by the Vatican to allow them. Now let me ask you a question: Would the Ku Klux Klan allow me to be their president? What? And let me ask you a question: Would the Ku Klux Klan, which was started 20 miles from here back in the day, would they allow me to be their president? No. Why? Because I'm black. Am I right? Would the Ku Klux Klan allow a Jew no. to be a part of the Ku Klux Klan, to be the president? No, because they don't like Jews either, am I right? They're not just prejudiced against blacks, against Jews and whoever. You know why? It would be a conflict of what? If I walked to a KKK man and said, look, y'all like to be the Grand Wizard. I'm like, what? And if they let me do it, then they wouldn't be the KKK no more, am I right? <laughs> am I right, somebody? Come on. Question. Ready for the second question? Is there a difference with Vatican City and the other unreached nations depicted? Is there a difference? Now, all the other nations, yeah, I got no problem with it. Even the most unreached country have no problem with it. But is there a difference with Vatican City? Oh, yes, it is. You know why? I put the answer there for you. I'm about to answer questions in a minute. Yes, because of their end time what? Agenda revealed in the Bible and the spirit of what? Prophecy. Yes, all nations are going to follow the beast. But what you need to understand is, is okay, people are answering. Yeah, I'm looking at all these. Somebody said, okay, uh, all right. Somebody said there are other places in Rome where a bookstore could be opened. <laughs> all right. This is deep, man. Oh, somebody said no. But why? So is there a difference? There is a difference. Am I right, somebody? So if I let the Vatican, I mean, for me, if I was a GC president, I'd be like, look, get that Vatican flag out of there. Fast. Amen. Fast. Am I right? Hold it. All right. I got another question before, we, before all those hands going to come up. Question. Does the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church in Vatican City know what seven-day Adventists believe? Yes, they do. Do they? Yes. So hold on now. But hold on, they say that it's, they haven't been reached yet. So that's kind of like, like they're ignorant, right? They're Are they ignorant? No. Are they ignorant? No. It walks like a duck? No. All right, okay, let me give you my answer. All right, let me see what people on YouTube said first. All right, what do you say on YouTube? Oh, man, that's a lot of comments on here. Man. Somebody said, I'd like to be the president. <laughs> answer without a question. They know what we believe, okay? Now, I'm going to get to the questions in a minute, all right? Without a question, all right? Does they, do they know what they believe? Do, do they know what seven-day Adventists believe? Yeah. Now, does North Korea know what seven-day Adventists believe? Yeah. Presumably, no. No, some of, some of, as a country, yeah. no, okay, all right. Now, watch this right here. They may know of it, but they not, okay, let me just kind of, let me just kind of make a point here, okay? Now, watch this right here. We're going to show you something. Conclusion. While it is impossible to please what? Everyone. This creates more questions than answers, and it gives some of those who are critical and fault finding of the church what? Ammunition. To castigate Elder Wilson, SDA leadership, and the General Conference of SDA as a what? 
whole. Oh, how do I know? I saw a video the other day. They were castigating everything. And they were justifying. Say, you don't need to, you need to leave them. I mean, people will take this and put it in the worst light and say, see, you can't be a G. You can't be, you can't be connected with the conference because uh, in, in that statement that we read this morning, well, if Ellen White was living today, she wouldn't have said that. They, they will tell you that kind of stuff. But it wasn't her that said it. It was God that said it. The Vatican flag is more than just a what? Nation. Nation. It represents an organizational agenda with what? Amen. Prophetic implications that are against the what message? Three angel messages of Revelation 14 and the inspired writings of who? Which points out the aims of the papacy, which will cause billions to be what? That's the reason why you shouldn't have had it. Nevertheless, I'll come back to that. 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 Uh, all right, I'll come back to that at the end. So, I got a problem with this. At a GC session. Do you understand this? This offends me. You hear me? Do you understand this? No more than a Confederate flag offends me. Do you understand this? Now, the hands can all go up. All right, now, this is what I need you to do. I, I, Brother Richard, you can take it off of the screen. Uh, this is what I need you to do. Because of the amount of hands that went up, I need you to keep your question or your comment to 30 seconds. Do you hear me? Because if I don't, we'll be here all day answering questions. Brother and Sister Keller, right there. Um, 30 seconds, and you, you need to keep it 30 seconds. Amen. Really quick, I should probably know this already, but has the flag been displayed in past GC sessions? Yes. I saw it myself at the 2010 session. So you mean to tell me in, t so in 12 years the Vatican been hasn't been reached with the third angel's message? Since before now? Huh? It hasn't been a controversy since before this It was a controversy. Well, well, social media ain't like it is today. So when you see it today, it's as if it, it was done for the first time. Uh, did anybody speak against it? I don't know. But when I saw it, I said to myself, why you got a Vatican flag at the GC session? But times are different. Go ahead. 30 well, seconds. I just want to say that it's a replay of history. Mm. Um, you think about Judas among the 12, and Christ knew everything that Judas was going to do, but he actually was ministering to Judas because Judas had a, had, a, had an opportunity to to turn around. There are people that are part of that system and we all know that are going to have the opportunity to turn around. In other words, they're going to have space to repent just like in the yeah, days exactly. of Noah. And hey, let me say this to those online, don't misunderstand what we're talking about here. We're making a, we're making a real issue. I'm about, to, I'm about to bring this thing to a certain point because we're not being critical of the Adventist church. Do you understand this right here? I'm not even being critical of Ted Wood, but I am addressing an issue. And brothers and sisters, what does this have to do? Let me tell you this right here. There are people within our church that have no problem with this. Not for the reason Ted Wilson, for the reason Ted Wilson just like we need to evangelize them. There are people who would have no problem shaking hands with the Vatican in the last days. I'm going to prove it in just a minute. Yes, go ahead. It was all these hands, 30 seconds. I know personally of two brothers. One went there to dig deep and inform us of things that's going on in the Vatican. And another one, a pastor went there to evangelize. And they both were, the brother was thrown out and the pastor was, you know, kaput. All right. Who else had a hand up? Sister Robbie, you had a hand? I have a few answers. Huh? Answered it? Okay, Sister, Sister um, Creech in the front, right here. Yeah, well, I have to, I have to get everybody. Go ahead. Go ahead. My last name is Bacon. No, it's, 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 a, it's not beef. No. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. The Vatican had put out, I think, if I'm wrong, I'm probably right. am, but the Vatican had put out a statement that they wanted all the churches to agree with their climate change and all of this other stuff right. that's going on, knowing that the Adventist church is not going to get, be a part of that. Well, there so, are seven day events that will be a part of that. That will have no problem getting being a part of it. Okay. All okay. right. I, I, I hope not. Yeah, I hope now, not either. Um, 
being an individual that likes to paint, mm -hmm. and you put the flag up there, the what you call them flag with the different colors, the yes. Vatic, you know, the other. So as an artist, then if I wanted to use those colors that they have in their flag, uh, letting us know that, you know, we are not like you, so this flag colors are representing us. So therefore, if I'm an artist and I want to use those colors, I can't do it because everyone will look at me as if I'm a part of that. You got to be group. very careful of everything you do because you Absolutely. don't want to be misunderstood. Absolutely. And my issue with it is, it's just, look, as leader, I would not want people to misunderstand us. I mean, right. GC's under a hot, a hot tape anyway by everybody on every side. You got people on the left that don't like Ted Wilson. You got people on the right that don't like, you got people on all sides that don't like him. When I saw this, I'm like, oh, this is just going to add just one more thing to this The thing. last thing I want to say about that is that, um, now we have to be careful because if we don't want that flag at our meetings or whatever it is, then it seems to me that they're putting out things that they want us to, you know, say, well, we're not going to be a part of that. And then they will have the whole world saying, look at those Adventists. They don't want to help us in any way. They don't want to be a part it of us. It just creates a lot they of misunderstanding. It, it just, Sister Robin? 30 seconds, and this is the Daphne. So the question I want to ask you is, do Seth, do, does the Vatican, does, does the hierarchy of the Catholic Church know what seven-day Adventists believe? Yes. Yes. Now, I'm going to prove this. So let me ask you this right here. So if they know what we believe, do they really need to be reached? Yeah, on one end, yes. But on the other end, they've already been reached. They already have. They just rejected it. Am I right, right? Go ahead. Okay. Um, when the Pope came here, I forgot what year it was. Put it right to your mouth. Oh, when the Pope came here, I forgot what year that was, and um, a group of Seventh-day Adventists went out and were distributing the great controversy. Didn't um, the president have to send a letter of apology to no, it was, no, it was No, it was not. No, no. The Spectrum, I think it was Spectrum or Adventist today, it was a fake letter. They're the one that did that. Okay. Um, because, and, and we're, you know, I see a lot of us are, are, are coming to the same conclusion that the Vatican right. or the, the individuals there, they know a lot more they than know they're a lot. projecting. Right. They know a lot more than they're projecting. And so that's why we see all these little coincidences yeah, coming exactly. up here and there. Yeah. So Sister Daphne, then I'm going to have to um, continue on. Now, brothers and sisters, is this serious? Yes. yes. And what happens is that this is, this is the thing that really gets me... Uh, this kind of thing, while it may not move me, it may have upset me, but those who are in the, there's a lot of people on the fence in, in Adventism who are prone to ecumenism. Do you understand this right here? Who have no problem uniting with them. And so we got to be very careful. Yes, ma'am. Um, one, we know that the Catholic Church does not change. It does not change. Two, the very name Catholic means all-encompassing. Yep, universal. So you got to change that name if you're going to change. But we already know that they will not change. Um, and three, they've made a lot of very bold statements that if you are a true Protestant, then you need to be a Seventh-day Adventist. If you are, um, that, that there are basically two churches left mm. in the world, and that's Seventh-day Adventist and Catholic. That's right. Right? So they've made these very bold statements. So that tells you a lot. It, it says they know, they know who we are. We know who they are. That's right. Right? And they're saying it's coming down to the wire. So we get that. Now, are there people there who still need to be reached? Yes. I'm sure. Absolutely. There are people at the Vatican that absolutely. need to be reached. I have no problem with that. But the hierarchy, they know what they're doing. They know exactly. And what I'm going to do right now, Brother Richard, let's go to the screen. I'm going to show you to let you know that the Roman Catholic Church does not, the, the hierarchy, they don't need to be reached. You know why? Well, they still need to be reached, but they know what we believe. You sure? Look at this right here. This is from a Catholic website called Catholic.com. And on the bottom it says, Seven Day What? Adventism. Now, who's that woman in the back? Ellen White. Her name is what? Ellen White. So anybody that's a Seven Day Adventist looking at that picture, oh, they're talking about us, right? And it says, Seven Day Adventism. Can I, this is from Catholic Answers. 
What answers? And this is written by a Catholic priest. How do I know? It says it right here. Or said it somewhere. It was, was it written by Catholic? Bottom line is this. Whoever wrote it, they knew exactly what we believe. But it says, are you ready for this? Come on, Doc. Oh, we're going to prove this right now. It says, most people know little about seven-day Adventists. Beyond that, they worship on Saturdays, not Sundays, but there's more to this unique sect. Can I read it to you? Now, they go into the Adventist history and all that kind of stuff, Adventist propaganda and all that kind of stuff. Now, look what it says right here, Adventist propaganda. White claimed to be, okay, it says her most important books called The Desire of Ages and The Great, it's just written by a Catholic now, Great Controversy are frequently reprinted by seven-day Adventist publishing houses in a variety of formats. They often appear with different covers and titles. Does that sound familiar? They are printed in whole or in accepted form. Sometimes Ellen G. White's name appears on the cover and sometimes what? Not. This allows Adventists to put White's works in the hands of non-Adventists without alerting them that they are reading an Adventist publication until they're well into the work. Does that sound strategic? Does that, that definitely sound like somebody that, been, that really know what we be doing, right? Seventh-day Adventist publishing houses also keep the term Seventh-day and Adventist out of their names. This is because Adventists have always been regarded suspiciously by evangelicals and have often been viewed as a fanatical cult. Many evangelical leaders have even asserted incorrectly that Seventh-day Adventists are not Christians, even though they believe in the divinity of Christ and all that kind of stuff. And it says, Adventists what? Beliefs. Seventh-day Adventists agree with many, <laughs> let me, some people who are anti-Trinitarian will hate this right here, but look what it says. Unfortunately, Seventh-day Adventists also hold on to many false and strange doctrines. Listen to this. Among these are the following. A, the Catholic Church is the whore of Babylon. Wow. This is written by a Catholic. So they know what we believe, am I right? They know. B, the Pope is the Antichrist. Right. Amen. C, in the last days, Sunday worship will be the mark of the beast, etc. Let's go to E. It's the soul that sleeps between death and the resurrection on the last day, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get into all that. But this person has a good knowledge of what Adventists believe, right? All right, listen to this right here. Listen to this. Adventists anti what? Catholicism. Catholics may suppose that anti-Catholicism is part of Adventism's radical fringe. Unfortunately, this is untrue. Adventists who are moderate on Catholicism are a minority. Anti-Catholicism characterizes the denomination because it is embraced in who? Ellen White's divinely inspired writings. A few illustrations will help indicate the scope of the problem. Then they quote from Great Controversy. The Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, is further declared to be the great city which reigned over the kings of the earth. The power that for so many centuries that have maintained its sway over the monarchs of Christendom is Rome. So they're quoting from the Great Controversy. Look at this. It is one, they're quoting from Great Controversy. This is a Catholic publication written by some Catholic leaders. So you ask me, have they been reached? Yes, they've been reached, brothers and sisters. It, it, they're repeating what we believe. Right. It is one of the leading doctrines of Romanism that the Pope is the visible head of the universal church of Christ. It has been declared infallible. He demands the homage of all men. The same claim urged by Satan in the wilderness of temptation is still urged by him through the church of Rome. And vast numbers are ready to yield him homage. And then, look at this one right here. They're quoted from Ellen G. White. Marvelous in her shrewdness and cunning is the Catholic Church. She can read what it's to be. They're quoting from the spirit of prophecy, and you're asking me, has the church been reached in a meaningful way? Well, if you quoted from Ellen White, you have been reached in a meaningful way. Evidently, somebody gave this young man a great controversy, man. and he was reading man, man. it. They know what so we they believe. know what we they believe. They know in it. what we believe. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it is a duck. She she read what is to be. She bides her time, seeing that the Protestant churches are paying her homage in their acceptance of the false Sabbath. And let it be remembered that it is the boast of Rome that she never changes. The principles of Gregory the Seventh and Innocent the Third are still the principles of the Roman Catholic Church. Man, they quote Ellen White word for word. They just got the page wrong. Have mercy. And they must have got it from another version. It says, look, then they quote, 
God's word is giving warning of the impending danger. Let this be unheeded and the Protestant world will learn what the purposes of Rome really are only when it's too late to escape the snare. She is silently growing into a power. Her doctrines are exerting their influence in legislative halls, in the churches, and in the hearts of men. She is piling up her lofty and massive structures in the secret recesses of which her former persecutions will be what? This is the Catholics quoting from Ellen White. Selfly and unsuspectingly, she is strengthening her forces to further her own ends when the time shall come for her to what? All that she desires is vantage ground, etc., etc. Bear in mind that these quotes are not taken from an obscure work of Ellen White that nobody ever reads. They are from what is probably her single most popular volume, The Great Controversy. And you think that the general, that the, that the uh, Catholic Church does not know what the general conference is getting ready to do for the next two years for Jake Great Controversy 2.0? Oh, yeah, they, they, they know. And they need to be reached. But it's not reached in the way that those other countries need to be reached. Sad that, now listen to this right here. According to her, to my Ellen White, the papacy is the seven-headed beast from the sea in Revelation 13. Accompanying that beast is the lamb-like beast from the earth. The latter causes the world to worship the former and has an image made of it. Why Ellen White proclaimed that the second beast is who? The United States. And that it will force people to worship on the, the papacy by enforcing some observance which should be an act of homage to the papacy. This observance, she says, is what worship? Sunday worship rather than Saturday worship. Ellen White, this is the Catholic Church. Ellen White claims, notice this right here, that the papacy changed the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday, making this change its mark of authority. In her view, there will come a time when the U.S. will establish a national what? Sunday law and compel its citizens to worship on Sunday. It will not compel them to become Catholics, but to join a Protestant state church that is an image of the papacy, thus the image of the beast. Brothers and sisters, they know what we that that tell me right there. But look at the next paragraph. Oh, look at the next Daphne, you better pass in your seat bills. It's about to knock your feet out from under you. Look what it says. Seven day Adventism cannot change its views on the Catholic Church being the whore of Babylon without admitting it was wrong on Sunday worship. It, talking about Seventh-day Adventism, cannot admit that Sunday worship is not the mark of the beast without changing its views on the Jewish Sabbath. But look at this. Seventh-day Adventism cannot cease to be anti-Catholic without ceasing to be Seventh-day Adventism. Wow. That's wow. Just planted. Is that clear? Catholic dot on seventh day Adventism and you mean to tell me they haven't been reached in a meaningful way they know if they, if they quoting for your books they, they've been reached very well am I right according to rumor they've infiltrated the church am I right right listen to this there is a moderate wing of Adventism, I'll go so far to say liberal, that is more open to Catholics as individuals in fact Ellen White was willing to concede that in the here and now, before the end time, some Catholics are saved. She wrote, there are now true Christians, now in every church, not ahead of the Catholic. Other words, they, they're quoting from Ellen White. They know. Then it says, unfortunately, this one tolerant statement is embedded <laughs> in hundreds of hostile statements. While this aspect of her teaching can be played up by her more moderate, or I'll say liberal followers, it is difficult for them to do so because the whole Adventist milieu in which they exist is anti-Catholic. Wow. The group is an eschatology sect, and its central eschatological teaching, other than Christ's second coming, is that the second coming will be preceded by a period in which the papacy will enforce Sunday worship on the world. They know. You see that. Everyone who does not accept the papacy Sunday worship will be killed, and everyone who does accept the papacy Sunday worship will be destroyed by God. That's what we believe, right? I mean, we wouldn't say it like that. But look at this. In virtue of their valid baptism, at least they say we Christians, their belief in Christ and divinity and the doctrine of the Trinity, seven day Adventists are Christians. At least they had enough not sense to say that. But Christians, once separated from the church, are Lord founded. Hold on now. They're saying that we separated from them. Uh-uh. They separated from us. Are susceptible to being tossed to and fro 
and cared about with every wind of doctrine. Wow, that's a, that's a serious jab. But look what they say. Seven-day Adventism, watch this right here, cannot cease to be anti-Catholic without ceasing to be seven-day Adventism. This was written on Catholic.com. Catholic.com, seven-day Adventism with Ellen White's face splattered all over it. And you mean that? So, so that's the reason why I had a problem with that Vatican flag and that explanation because I was like, come on now. I mean, come on. I mean, if I've read it, I'm sure somebody else has read it. Am I right? All right. Now, watch this right here. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this somewhere because this is serious. Am I right? Is it serious? Now, watch this right here. Now, now I'm going to share something with you so we know. Now, see, this kind of mistake plays into the hands of seven-day Adventists that want to act like the truth don't exist. Do you understand this right here? And what happened was I had a debate with somebody on Facebook, and they were saying, this Adventist, I have this minister too. He said, I don't see nothing wrong with the Vatican flag. I said, let me ask you a question. If they had a, Vatican, if they had a Confederate flag flying on Oakwood's campus, we'd have a problem with it. He started laughing. He said, I got your point. Am I right? Enough said. I'm like, we got flags on the campus, especially during Alumni Week. And what if somebody just decided to put a Vatican flag, they're not, Vat uh, not a Vatican, a Confederate flag on Oakwood's like, hold on, you need to take that off of there. But watch this right here. This Vatican flag, in my mind, represents this. And let me tell you this. While people were getting on Ted Wilson for that, on for that reason, I found this. Now, anybody who watched Ted Wilson's sermon, it was powerful. Yeah. It was powerful. I mean, I want to play some of it, but I can't play, could do the time, but it was powerful. You need to watch it. It was powerful. Man, that made me feel good. For, that made me feel good being a seven-day Adventist listening to that message. Absolutely. But this young lady on Facebook, she put, she almost was apologizing for his sermon today, and look what five, look what four, she made four points on his sermon. Number one, are you ready for it? It says, Based on Ted Wilson's GC session sermon today, and for anybody who saw it, and I watched it, not only for my own self, but to answer these false claims. And see, people like this would have had no problem with the Vatican flag. They probably wouldn't have no problem. Just look, look, listen to this, Mike. Look what she says. I found out based on this sermon that I'm in a cult. Re Wilson repeatedly told us today that the SDA church domination is superior to all other churches in the eyes of God. Did he say that? No, he, did he didn't say that one time. No. But you see how people take things out of context? This is the seven day Adventist saying this. He supported this claim with Bible verses in Daniel and Re Revelation in Daniel. But see, that was lightweight compared to what I'm about to show you. you ready for the next one? Next. This girl said, I fully understand that this was an internal sermon. Of course it was an internal sermon. It's a general conference session. Right. Okay, if it was a crusade, he wouldn't have said all that. Do you understand this? Right. If I'd have been doing a crusade, I wouldn't have said all this. But when you're talking to a seven-day Adventist assembly, when you say things what you say, they understand what we're saying. Am I right? If I go to Jamaica, into a Jamaican house, why could I say, well, why are they all talking patois up in here? <laughs> Come on, if I go to a Haitian's house. Why are everybody talking Creole up in here? You know what I'm talking about, right? If I go to Central America, to Puerto Rico, I should expect people to talk Spanish in their house. So if, so if I go to a seven-day Adventist GC session, come on now, why can I hear Adventist terminology? I'm sure that if this was an outreach event, Wilson would have used a different approach. However, the approach he used here sets the tone for how their members view their denomination and their posture towards other believers. Wilson did not hold back in his statements regarding the remnant people of God. He believes that the SDA church is the remnant. Like, that's the problem. problem. Did you see that? Did you see that? Oh, she wouldn't have had no problem with the Vatican flag. Didn't say this right here. Come on. She probably had no problem with the Vatican flag draped over somebody like it's a coat. Look at this. Only God determines who is the remnant. Well, that's true, but not the way she's saying it. That Wilson preached today did not accurately represent me or many of my friends who all identify as and has been raised within the seven day of in this church. What? That girl is confused. You hear me? She don't know what she believe. Hold on. Huh? But you got pastors that believe this, that we're not the remnant. Yes, we are. We, Revelation 12, 17 tells me that I am. 
Revelation 18 tells me who Babylon is and to come out of her, my people. That's the reason why I left the Baptist church because of Revelation 18. And I joined the SDA church because of Revelation 12, 17. And if we take that out, then why should anybody join the Adventist church? You see what this ecumenical attitude has done? It's softer than our stance. Look at this right here. There are unbiblical, hold on. I, there are unbiblical statements in Wilson's sermon. Let me tell you this. I listened to that whole thing. There was nothing wrong. Even though I talk about that flag now. There was nothing wrong. Am I right? Man, that was, a, I'm like, that's a sermon every seven day of his pastor needs to preach. He preached all of it. You hear me? It was present true. He even was quoting from the spirit of prophecy. He was even quoting them hard spirit of prophecy statements. I said, man, I'm like, whoa, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Now nah, I know I ain't crazy no more. Amen. <laughs> Look at this. The most obvious blunder to me was his insistence that there will be a Sunday law. What? Man. Now she she gone. How you a seven day of minutes and and you don't believe that? I mean, I can see if you got baptized yesterday and didn't know, but if you've been a seven-day Adventist for at least 10, 20 years, you know what we believe. It says, he said that the Sunday law is a definite fact that Christianity is definitely Babylon. There is no way to verify this. What? Yeah, that's what she said. There's no way to verify this. Then if that's the case, then what, what, what are we doing every Sabbath afternoon here then? <laughs> Until the Sunday law actually happens, it isn't a fact. That means she don't even believe in it. It is not a biblical fact that the mark of the beast is a Sunday law. This is an interpretation prediction. Wow. Hold on, I got you. Brothers and sisters, this should make you mad. But you know what? People like that can say that and not lose their jobs. People can say stuff like that. Oh, you all cool with me, baby. But if you get up talking about what we're talking about, well, is he really in the conference and stuff? Is he really? And even people from within, like, should we even hire this dude? Because if he, huh? I believe this message, brothers and sisters. Do you understand? I left wanting to be an NBA player for this truth. Do you understand this right here? Not that I would have made it, but the bottom maybe I would have made it. But the bottom line is, is I left a lot, Brother Pennington. Do you understand this right here? Trying to go to Georgetown to play for John Thompson and the Hoyas. Am I right, brother? I wasn't trying to go to USC. I wasn't trying to go to Georgia Tech or not even North Carolina where Jordan played. I was trying to play for the Hoyas. But when I saw the third angel's message, God took that desire out of my heart to where once I found the truth, I didn't even want to go to Georgetown no more. And that's a Catholic school. Yes. You had your hand up. Oh, yeah, hold on. If, just a Daphne, before you say something, look at this last one right here. The Advent message. I support, hold on. She says, I support the 28 fundamental beliefs of the Adventist church. Does she really? She couldn't. You couldn't say all that stuff. And so, hold on. You couldn't say all that stuff and say you believe in the 28 fundamental doctrines. I will go even so far to say that the Adventist church does have a calling from God. If you don't believe with the Redman, then what are we here for? However, I see no proof in church history or the Bible that defines our calling to be making everyone become seven-day Adventists. I do believe that. I believe everybody should be a seven-day Adventist. You know why? Because of the truth. And I go, if, if we really believe what we believe, I couldn't be a Roman Catholic or a Baptist or a Sunday keeping Protestant in the last days if we believe that the mark of the beast is what it is and we're to come out of her my people. So what church do I join? I would have to join the seven day Adventist church. Amen. It doesn't mean we're better than nobody. It just means that God has called us with this specific called us with this specific mission. This, she says, likewise, as someone is not SDA does not automatically mean they are in spiritual Babylon. What? Yes, they are in Babylon. The Bible says, come out of her my way. And if, if, if you're a Catholic, you're in Babylon. If you're in Baptist church, you're in Babylon. If you're in a Sunday-keeping Protestant church, you are in Babylon. Do you understand what I'm talking about? This is what we believe, but you got seven-day Adventist lay people and leaders who don't believe this. 
and think that we're a fanatical church here at State Line, but they can call us fanatical all day. They can, they can call us name, they can call it whatever they want. Because we're going to stand on the truth. Amen? Sister Daphne, go ahead. 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> 30 seconds. Um, one, I think one of the problems is we have failed in teaching our young people about the history. Right. Every Protestant church knew, their founders knew, that the Catholic church, the Pope, was indeed the Antichrist. They knew all this. It was, they, they, they had these notes even in a book, in the Bible called the Geneva Bible, which is why they stopped using that one. Because it had the foot, it had all the notes in there showing where to get the information, and it showed everything. So these people don't know the history. They don't understand why, why are these other churches called Protestant churches. They were protesting. They were protesting against the fact that the Catholic Church was teaching heresy, right? So when they're talking this smack, they, they don't know where they're coming from. They, they don't, don't know what they're talking they about. They don't know what they're talking about. They just don't. That young lady did not know what she was talking about. She just didn't, brothers and sisters. Hold on for a second. It, you know what? Even though I knew, Brother Kyle, that the Sabbath was Saturday, but when I found out that Sunday worship was the mark, I knew I couldn't stay in the Baptist church no longer, even if I wanted to. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But we live in a day that if you really believe what we teach and practice it, you're looked upon as somebody that's out of tune with Adventism, even though you are in tune. they the ones that the, are out of tune with it. And I, I, if, this was a, uh, if this was rare, then I wouldn't talk about it. But this reflects what a lot of people believe, sad to say, some of our pastors. I'm going to read to you something. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Well, I just want to make a, a comment related to the statement. Brother that, Richard, you can take it off now. That somebody was um, saying that Ted Wilson, they had a problem with what he said, and they inserted the word superior. I believe there's a quote where Sister White said, Adventist education is superior in second to, to none. none. I also, agree with that. Also, uh, I want to make a comment about the fact that the person that was with all those questions, they fit the description that you were reading in that Catholic thing yep. that you were reading yes. about being carried away with every wind of doctrine. I think there are many people who may be Adventists, but not necessarily converted. And not. Uh, and that's what it is. People are not converted to this thing. Because, I mean, if you keep it real, this thing is really straight. Yes, my brother. I'm going to read to you what somebody sent me the other day on Facebook. Hope I can find it. It was what a student sent to me from another country. Now, watch this right here. I'm going to read to you. This is, and, and we got to, and see, we got to stand firm against it. Because what Satan is doing is, if we can water down what we believe, then guess what? When it comes, we will have nothing to stand against. Am I right, somebody? And granted, I'm not going to lie to you. I know I'm putting a lot on the line by teaching this. But you know what? So what? Just imagine if I said, you know, I'm not going to preach this so I can get a job. No. If, I, if I don't preach certain things, then I'll, I'll preach it once I get in. But if I preach it now, it's going to make it hard for me to get in. Let me tell you this. Even if I never get in certain places, it ain't about them. It's about being faithful to God. Oh, let me show you. Hold on. Br brother, um, go ahead. Go ahead, bro Elder. Um, I just wanted to make the observation that uh, Elder White says that um, before the final prices and, and as a part of it, some of our most dangerous critics will be former or weak Seventh-day Adventists. So we need not be alarmed by it. Just recognize that this is what's happening. And we need to, uh, if we can't work with them, stay away from them. Yeah. Who else had a hand up? Sister Becky? Because somebody sent me a letter yesterday. I'm trying to find it. Here it is, right here. Hold on. Oh, this is not it. All right, hold on. I got to show you this. Go ahead, sister. Okay. I wanted to say uh, about uh, 
What about um, like the the church, uh, the United Church of God, that they worship on Saturdays? But they don't have the third and three angels' but messages. They don't, they don't have the gift nope. of prophecy. No. Nope. So even though they're worshiping and keeping the Sabbath, are they're not considered a remnant? They're not. Okay. I just wanted to make clear that up, and also I just wanted to say I left the Holiness Church because of the Sabbath and the three angels' messages, and the sanctuary. Man, it's because somebody's. Yeah, thank you. Somebody sent me, somebody sent me, who else has a hand up? Yes, Cliff. You know, one thing we have to be careful of, and the Bible says that I there's going to be a shaking in the church. What can be shaken will be shaken. Yes, if indeed. you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. anything. And a lot of us, a lot of bright lights are going to, are go, going out. to go out That's in right. these last days. So we better be careful. Be very, very careful. Because Sister White says the time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. She says those who have step by step yielded to worldly demands and then conformed to worldly customs will not find it a hard matter. Why am I hitting this? Because a spirit of unbelief, brothers and sisters, is running rampant among our people. Do you understand this? To where people don't believe this truth no more. Do you understand this? I mean, you got people who don't believe this. They just don't. And uh, here it is right here. Now, um, brother, uh, I'm not going to, um, oh, man. I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to put this up on a slide. But what happens is don't put it on the screen yet. I want to put together a conversation that I had with a, um, a student, okay, and at a, one of our institute, one of our colleges. He's a theology major, and it's in another country. It's in another country. It's not in, Amer it's not in the United States. And uh, I'm just going to read to you what he told me. You know what? I can't, uh, I'm not going to be able to show you here because um, it's going to take too long. But let me do this right quick. Let me just read it to you. Let me just read to you the, con can I read to you the conversation I had with him? Now, he had asked me, because, you know, and I, had, I haven't talked to this brother in a while. But listen what he says right here. And I'm going to read to you the conversation that we had. Now, this conversation took place about over a week ago. And, um, you know, I had gave him some advice on how to deal with going through, you know, theology because sometimes people have lost their way. Am I right? Yeah. All right. And so it doesn't mean that everybody's going to lose their way. But this is what he told me. Now, this is what he said right here. Now, he, he, this is what he said. He said um, that he's coming into his third year in theology school and what happened was is that um and this is what he said i gotta read you this right here he was saying look you know pray for me because of what i'm gonna have to face with this college professor now this is in another country now he says this teacher teaches a class on revelation as revelation very important in, in ministerial training absolutely i was talking to one of his students and by chance he showed me the textbook that was assigned that textbook literally challenges everything we teach. Did you hear that? Now, he's going to school to learn how to be an Adventist minister, but he's being taught in a revelation class, challenging everything that he knows. I don't know. As though, it says, as though we need to reevaluate our stances, and notice this, and cast aspiration on our teachings. Wow. It says, rather than teach them what we believe so that they would know he has spent, this teacher, he said, spent an entire semester breaking down the students' beliefs. That sounds like a Jesuit. Am I right, somebody? That's that. See, that's what Jesuits would do. But whether he was a Jesuit or not, Ellen White says that evil angels would do it in human form. Listen to this. And listen, what the, you know what, the, you know what the, his student friend told him after he took the class? Listen to this, Mike. This pastoral student confessed that he doesn't ever see himself ever planning to teach revelation in his ministry as an Adventist minister. Brothers and sisters, if you're not going to teach the prophecies of revelation and you're talking about being a seven day, you better go into another profession. If I was a conference president, if you ain't strong and not trying to be strong in it, I will not hire you. I don't care how many degrees you got. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Straight up. See, what happens is these teachers are spreading unbelief to these theology professors. And these students, these theology students don't know what they believe. And then they get hired. 
And what are they going to preach? They're going to preach all this feel good stuff to every other denomination. So when the mark of the beast comes, you even got seven day. I, I had their seven day Adventist pastors I know that don't even believe that the Sunday word, that the that Sunday is the mark of the beast. If they don't believe in the third angel's message, what in the world can they teach when this thing comes? I remember my, I remember one of my seminary professors back in 2000. 2000 he had a P, just got his PhD. He got up in our class and said, we don't know what the image of the beast is. I said, hold on, the spirit of prophecy says it's apostate Protestantism. He said, well, Ellen White is not the Bible. Yeah. How in the world, I mean, that's like Mike Tyson trying to knock somebody out with a slap. Now, he probably could do that, right? That's like boxing with a feather in your hand. Have mercy. Hold on for a second. So then what happened was, it says, wow. And that's what the brother said. He said that he can never see himself. He can never see himself teaching from Revelation ever again. This, this is before he even leaves the pastor one church. Mm -hmm. So what kind of attitude are they going to have when the members start that's preaching really it? Sad. What kind of attitude they're they going to have? Because you know the general conference voted that you can have spirit of prophecy direct um, coordinators in your church, which I think is a good thing if you got the right people there. Am I right? Yeah. If you have the right person. Please, can you vote me to be the spirit of prophecy director in this church? But I mean, what happens is when he reads the spirit of prophecy, he's not going to want to read that. Am I right? What he's going to wind up, if you take it to his logical conclusion, this person most likely is going to leave the seven day Adventist church and become a Sunday keeper. There's a, uh, a, a, is a, a brother of a very famous pastor in the black word. <sighs> Same thing. That, and another brother, he was a son of a pastor. It all started in the classroom. And I looked at the story and he said, my beginnings was when the professor was saying this and saying that. And the professors were saying stuff that was contrary to what we believe in Seven Day Adventists. And one Decided, and both of them pastors left the Avenue Church and are now Sunday pastors. Mm. See, what happens is, brother and sisters, is, is that they say if you want to be immortal, not, in, not really, but reality, if you want to be immortalized, be a teacher. A teacher can shape your thinking, you hear me? And relativism. I had, I had a, a prominent pastor in the black world call me last week. He said, my son is questioning Adventism. But that's why the parents are to be the first teachers. Huh? That's why the parents are to be the first teachers. You're supposed to be the first teachers. But see, even then, what happens is I've seen students that came. They were taught very well, but you get the wrong teacher. They come out saying something crazy. And so what happened was is that this, per this he told me, and I know who the guy was, his student. He was one of my favorite students in my class. He said, I know he took your class. I said, I'm going to tell you one thing, my brother. Nobody can walk out of my class ever questioning what we believe in seven day Adventists. He got that from somewhere else. But I did recall by his questioning, and even one time he told me how relative, talked about relativism. I said, okay, these students on our, all of our campuses, and they may not be getting it from a teacher, but they're getting it online on social media. Relativism is being taught, and relativism is destroying faith in the Bible as an inspired revelation and it's destroying faith in the spirit of prophecy because Ellen White's writings are very straightforward am I right and because they're very straightforward what happens is it causes people to think but what happens is people start rejecting it because you hear the terms your truth my truth have you heard that before I, hold on I see the hands let me get to you in a second your truth my truth and then what happens is what they say is things are no longer black and white everything is different shades of gray Everything is gray now. So when you come preaching the straight testimony, they don't want to hear it. When you come preaching Christ-centered, biblically-based, seven-day Adventism, folk don't want to hear it. And then when you start talking about there's going to be a national Sunday law, then you see people saying all kinds of stuff. Do you see what Satan is trying to do to the seven-day Adventist church? So what happens is... This doesn't make, then, then what then, but Dr. O and people like him are saying don't make any sense. Do you understand this right here? Do you understand this right here? I know it's a lot of, we covered a lot of stuff, but I, guess what? But look, why is Satan doing this? Satan is planting these seeds of unbelief so that you won't believe in the Adventist message no more. Am I right? 
And if you don't believe in this message no more, then why are you going to preach it? Huh? Why are you going to preach it? I've had pastors who are trained, based on their training, told me I will never give a Bible study from Amazing Facts. What? Wow. I've heard this kind of stuff. I've had, I've had PhDs, uh, doctors in theology tell me, I want to tell me straight up to my face, he said this idea of, of, of the remnant being a denomination ain't true. What? They don't believe. See, what happens is, the truth is, you got people in leadership who are teaching our members, teaching our, theolo our the uh, upcoming pastors yeah. that the stuff that we believe in, believe ain't really true. Yeah. But really what it's saying is, and it, they're not saying it, but they're really saying is, you got Adventist leaders and lay people teaching other Adventists that we really are a cult. Yeah. Yeah. Because think about it, they will never say that. They'll just say, well, that's not right. Well, if it's not right, and it's connected with what we believe, especially the visions of Sister White, then Sister White hasn't been wrong. Yeah. And if she's wrong, the church is wrong, then what in the world am I doing in a church that's wrong? Hmm? Then watch this right here, brothers and sisters. I had a seven-day Adventist woman pastor tell me. She said this, the investigative judgment is not a biblical doctrine. That's what she told me. She told me out of her... <laughs> She don't need to be hired to be no theologian. Nobody like that needs to be hired to be. You know why? Ellen G. White says that those, who, in our, those in our schools who do not believe in the sanctuary, that's in Ellen White's writing, she said those who do not believe in the sanctuary doctrine do not, be teach, do not need to be teaching in our schools. That's the foundation. If you believe 1844 was just made up, that there's no real heavenly sanctuary, you don't need to be teaching nobody. You need to go to a Sunday church and teach all that. Do you understand this right here? Do you understand this right here? Because all you got left is all these feel-good sermons, but people get tired of that after a while. I get tired of candy after a while, don't you? Hello? So what happens is this right here, man. We at State Line and I myself and I have chosen to be where we are to preach this Adventist message because it's the truth, brothers and sisters. Am I right? And people like myself, if there's any leaders, because let me tell you this right here. I'm realizing that regular mainstream people are watching us. Do you understand this? I had a person that works from a prominent publication in the Adventist church just the other day. I said, hey, sister. She said, my husband watches you every week. I'm like, wow. And I'm walking around, people shaking my hand like, man, we watch the Sunday Law Update every week. People are watching it. You understand this right here? And that's the reason why we can't let up, we cannot allow this church to be divided. Do you understand this? Because guess what? We got a good thing going on. Do you understand this right here? And there are people who watch us every single week who have a better appreciation for what we do every week than some who go to church here. I know you have a good appreciation of it. I see your hands. So what's going on? Let's go to the screen, Brother Richard. Let me finish this up because things are happening. What happens is, look what it says here. Go to church. Dominican police are told. Did you see that? The Dominican, in the Dominican Republic, the police are being told to go to church. Did you see that? Did you see that? The police are being told to go to church. And do what? I'm glad you asked. The director of the National Police instructed the different regional directories to select commissions of police members to participate in Sunday masses and cults of the Catholic and evangelical churches to send to his office a report every what? Wow. Containing data of the agents, churches, and photographic images of the activities. How, what does that sound like to you? I don't, I don't even like the way that sounds. Look what it says here. This provision contemplated in memorandum number 17080 dated May 22nd seeks that agents receive religious what? Guidance and integrate into this healthy work of our society which will allow them to interact with citizens of good faith indicates the same document. The request from Major General Eduardo Alberto then was issued last week and asked the commanders of every jur how many jurisdiction is sent in on Dominican Republic? Every. To carry out the coordination of the place 
and all the areas under their respective commands in order to select commissions of police members who will attend the worship carried out by the Catholic and evangelical churches. What does that sound to you? Yes. What does that sound like to you in 15 seconds? What does that sound? Because I got I, I to gotta get through all this in 15 minutes. Go ahead. It sounds like? Frontline folk. Front folk. So when a Sunday law comes, if you ain't going to church, the police will know who be playing hooky, right? When you get the police involved, that's enforcement, right? I, I couldn't believe that. I mean, I mean, people, and I want to thank all the lay people who send me this stuff. I mean, it's some serious stuff, brothers and sisters. The police are, look, look what it says, go to church. <laughs> Somebody said, what, what about Jamaica? I'm glad you asked. Well. Uh-oh. What's going on in Jamaica? The market, oh, man, what's going on, something wrong. Market beast in Jamaica, brother. You better watch out. The mark of the beast is coming to Jamaica, bro. And look at this right here. Listen to this article right here. Look at this. Seprod has invested over $170 million to expand its subsidiary International Biscuits Limited, IBL, or Butterkist. The capital is being used to increase its product lines with the implementation of new equipment, which will see the company venturing into cheese snacks. The investment also involves the commissioning of a new oven, oil spray machine, and a tembler system. The cheese snacks line is expected to improve profits for the company. General Manager at IBL, Howard Guthrie, says the new line should boost earnings by 20 to 25 percent. Now the five new products operators development are set to benefit from the initiative. Jamaica's central bank digital currency will officially be called the Jamaica Digital Exchange or Jamdex. The Bank of Jamaica chose the name following a competition involving members of the public. Jamdex will also be represented by a logo. Look at that. No cash, no plural. Man which incorporates Jamaica's national fruit, Aki. Now, the full public rollout of Jamdex is to take place this quarter. And speaking of the Bank of Jamaica... You hear that? You hear that, y'all? Currency. And look at this right here. The Senate's nod to Central Bank Jamaican currency. Brothers and sisters, look at this right here. Jamaica launches Jamdex, becomes the first nation to legalize digital currency. Jamaica, brothers and sisters. Why not Barbados? Because when Jamaica does it, then that influences all the, the, the West Indian islands to do it. Do you understand this right here? They become the first nation in the world to legalize, wow, digital currency. Brothers and sisters, the mark of the beast is coming to all, oh, do you understand this right here? And while this is happening, look what's going on. Look at this article right here. Sunday is the Lord's day. Look at that. This came out in Tennessee. This came out in Tennessee. It's May 9th, 2022. Sunday is the Lord's day. And guess who's given the answer? The late Billy Graham. Well, Billy Graham is wrong. Was wrong. And listen to this right here, brothers and sisters. It says it is heart. It has been heartbreaking to see the Lord's Day secularized. Didn't Ellen White say they'll talk about doing it? Didn't Ellen G. White say this? this? Yeah, look at this right here. Now, um, I'm gonna get to the Pope in just a second. Sunday rest. I'm telling you, it's coming, brothers and sisters. Now, hold on now. Does anybody buy Amazon in here? Look what it says. Should the, U should the United States Postal Service, hold on, let me, let me, let me use this one. It says, should USPS honor the Sabbath or Amazon? Because Amazon delivers on Sundays. But what happens is what they're saying is the United States Postal Service should not be doing it on Sunday. That's what this article is saying. Because in 1912 and 1913, the Postal Service stopped delivering mail on Sundays but in 2013, Amazon brought it back up again. And what happened is it's a debate because there was a mail carrier that wanted to get Sunday off because he believed that's his Sabbath and they would not let him get off. But when a Sunday law comes, he will be able to get off. Do you see this, brothers and sisters? Do you see this? This thing is coming, brothers and sisters. This issue about the Sabbath is getting ready 
to hit the fan. You hear me? And look at this right here. Look at this. All those who are, who are watching in Trinidad and Tobago, I don't even need to read the article. Look what it says right here. Trinidad and Tobago are told to brace for food shortages and higher prices in the coming months. Brothers and sisters, the stock market is going down. Cryptocurrency is going down. Brothers and sisters, they're telling you it's going to be an economic collapse. Oh, man. Satan is instigating this thing to bring about a national Sunday law. Do you understand this right here? Trinidad and Tobago. And what did Ellen G. White said? The price of food would rise before the time of trouble. But look what's going on. Did you know that just this week that the Buddhist leader came to meet the Pope at the Vatican? The Bible says that all nations are going to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All the churches are going to unite except the seventh day Advent. Am I right, somebody? Do you understand this right here? Let's look at this right here. This is very deep. And then last night at one of our camp meetings, it was at a camp meeting last night. What, you know what the speaker said? He was jabbing. He said, talk about people, talk about if the, if the Pope scratched his behind, they talk about it. I'm like, wow. They call us Pope watchers. My wife said, they talking about you. Well, I don't care. They're not talking about, they talking about, the, they talking about Christ. Yeah. Do you understand this? It ain't about me. Guess what, brothers and sisters, if there was, hold on, watch this right here. When COVID was going around, all they talked about, that's all you heard was COVID. Yeah. Like COVID, 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 COVID. Am I right, somebody? Right. COVID, 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 COVID. Mass, 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 mass. Jab, 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 jab. <laughs> but when we talk about the real virus that's coming, do you understand this right here? Oh, we don't need to be talking about that. He said, in his sermon, if I have earrings on, I'm lost. But if I don't have it, I'm saved. He was knocking dress reform. You know what, brothers and sisters, let me tell you this right here. We're not worrying about those who reject this truth because people know that something's getting ready to happen. Yeah. Too much, Sister Daphne, too much stuff is going on right now for me to think, oh, it's just going to go back to normal. Yeah. It's gotten worse. Am I right, somebody? I mean, it's gotten worse. Let me play this video for you. Watch this right here. Let's look at this right here. Look at this, the Buddhist. I remember the other day at the health food store, I met a nice young lady. She was very nice and sweet, black lady, and she told me she's a Buddhist. I said, man, a Buddhist? I never met a black Buddhist before in my life. But what happens is people are joining these religions and stuff, but notice this, all roads lead to who? Rome. Listen to this. Pope Francis met with this delegation of Buddhist monks from Thailand. They traveled to the Vatican to commemorate 50 years since the meeting between the 17th. What are Buddhist priests going to the Vatican for? They don't even believe in the same God. But what happens is the Jesuits have infiltrated the Buddhist religion. Did you know that? They infiltrated all religions and churches. Why are they sitting down at the Pope? Why are they going to the Pope's house? It's all about control. If I say, look, come to my house, that's a kind of, that's a control thing. Yeah. As a leader, am I right, somebody? If I say, I want you to meet me at my house, no, I want you to meet me at, you know, when I was in the seminary, um, uh, one of my teachers said, whenever you have members that want to try to do something on you, and they say, can you please come over to so-and-so's house? You say, no, don't go. You say, I'll meet you at a neutral place. Right. right? Because if you go to their house, that's more like an ambush, am I right? It's just the way it is, man. I, I, I didn't listen, I have not always listened to that, but <laughs> it is still is true, but watch this. Listen to this. The Buddhist patriarch, Venerable Sunday, Fra Wanarat, with Paul the... They don't believe in Jesus Christ. But they're sitting... If the, hold on. If the Pope said, follow me, would they follow him? Yes. yes. You know why? Because the whole world will wander after the peace. I, I, hold on, hold on. I, I got you. I'm, I'm gonna get to you. Let me finish this. Let me, let me, let me finish this. Let me just finish this. Hold on, hold on. The sixth in 1972, the Pope celebrated the friendly dialogue and collaboration between the two religions, and said that Catholics and Buddhists have much in common. What? what? Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me. What? Much in common. He said. Hold on. Let me let you hear that one more time. The two religions, and said that Catholics and Buddhists have much in common. 
that Catholics and Buddhists have much. I, hold on, I see the hands. That Catholics and Buddhists have much in common. That Catholics and Buddhists, that is a lie from hell. If they got much in common, then the Buddhists don't need to be converted to Christ. Yeah, they may be some commonalities, but let me tell you, there's a whole bunch of difference like Jesus is Lord, he's the Savior, you need to accept him. Am I right? I mean, I was looking at the young lady the other day at the health food store. She's a black Buddhist. I have never, to say to me, even if a black person in this part of the world didn't serve God, they still believe in God. Am I right? They don't still believe in you. You you'll hardly meet a black person that says, I don't believe in God. But to say I'm a Buddhist, like, wow, something must have been going on, right? Hold on, I see, I see, I see you getting ready to raise your hand. Hold on, let, let me finish this. I'm making a point, and then we'll get to the hands. Go ahead. Hold on. Il Buddha e Gesù hanno compreso la necessità di superare l'egoismo che genera i conflitti e violenza. The Pope asked them to continue joining their efforts to build a better world together. Oh, you know, did you hear what he said? To build, build a better world together. I'm telling y'all, man. See, y'all saying, what does this Vatican flag got to do with this? It got everything to do with this. They know what they're doing. And we can't give the impression like we ignorant of that. Because flying that Vatican flag at a GC session, I was like, you know, come on. I mean, if, if you saw me do something, if I was a GC president and you saw me do that, you have every right to, to, to get me out. <laughs> you have every right to, to tell me about myself. Dr. Oh, you know better. Remember what you preached at State Line? I'm like, yeah, you know. Nostro compito oggi è guidare i nostri rispettivi fedeli a un senso più vivo della verità che siamo That we're all brothers and sisters? Oh boy, the, it's the I don't want to I got you. It's the Pope, let me ask you, is the Pope doing his job? He's doing a good job. Is he doing a good job bringing the whole world together to follow his authority? Yes. He's selling this product. But he's selling that thing, boy. See, the, the Pope says you don't have to be a Catholic. All you got to do is just follow me. That's what he's saying. Am I right? And didn't Revelation say that all nations, that includes the Buddhist nations, are going to follow him? I'm telling y'all, man, this is real. Nobody wants to believe me, but watch this right here. Look what it says right here. And we're going to get to the hands in a second. What? It entails that we have to work together? done man I'm not done for real but I'm done I'm done with the Pope why are seven day Adventists not preaching this why are they not doing sister Bob? Sister Bob, why are they not doing it oh we don't need to talk about that oh that's just conspiracy theory preaching oh Dr. Owen state line fanatics. they just fanatics oh that's not state line not my kind of church and stuff like that it may not be your kind but it's God's kind amen <laughs> or at least we're trying to make it God's kind amen Look at this. Lavorare insieme per coltivare la compassione, l'ospitalità per tutti gli esseri umani, specialmente per i poveri e marginati. Pope Francis left them with a blessing and the hope to extend their work together for another 50 years. What? Another 50 years? Look, you got the Buddhist priest and you got the Catholic priest up in there. Boy, the Catholic Church, the Jesuit order has done their job. The, the jet they have. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> have they done it to the Daphne? Have they done their job? Oh, yeah. They've done it. It's over. It's over. Sister Tiny, is it over, sister? Do you see that they do you see what they're doing? You see that? And oh, this don't this don't mean nothing, Sister Tiny. You're just taking it too far. I'm sorry. If any seven day Adventists tell you that we're taking it too far. I question whether they seven day Adventists or not. They are doing what they have to do to prophecy. They're doing what they have to do to fulfill prophecy. And we can't stop it. All right. Now watch this right here. Now, you think that Pope don't know what we believe? No. He knows. He's a Jesuit, brothers and sisters. Am I right, somebody? 
leopard never changes. A leopard never changes his spots. Hold on. Who were they praying to? They weren't praying to God? The, Buddha. the Bible says you got to pray in Jesus' name. Am I right? But the Pope sitting there saying, he act like ain't nothing wrong with that. Am I right? They praying to, to a false god. Am I right, somebody? But the Pope don't care. The reason why is because as long as they follow me. This ecumenical movement, I'm telling you, is dangerous, man. This ecumenical movement is dangerous. Who, who is in control? The Pope is controlling the strings here, brothers and sisters. And But we as seven-day Adventists, we're not going to let this happen. Well, so what happens is this right here. Are the Buddhists going to worship on Sunday? Yeah. Are they going to worship on Sunday? When the Pope says, look here, you know what? You know, we're praying to the same God. You know, we're trying to save the earth from pollution. Let's do this. Look, you still can pray to Buddha, but let, let's just worship on Sunday. You can pray to Buddha on Sunday. Let's just, I got you. Let's just rest on Sunday. Just follow my lead. I, the, but see, watch this right here. Remember those unclean spirits like frogs? What happens when the devil personates Buddha and says, you know, the Pope is right. I'm the Buddha that you've been praying to. We need to follow the Pope's lead. Oh, it's over, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, spiritualism is going to play a big role in this. And that's the reason why. I'm telling you, man, this is the reason why that we're preaching this. That's why this Vatican flag is a no-no. It just is. And let me tell you this. My conclusion is this. The Vatican flag is more than just a nation. It represents an organizational agenda with prophetic implications that are against the three angels' messages of Revelation 14 and the inspired writings of Ellen White, which points out the aims of the papacy, which will cause billions to be lost. But nevertheless, those in Vatican City will once again have a chance to leave Babylon at the loud cry of the third angel's message. As we receive the latter rain, as T Elder Wilson stated, so this message will go forth with power. Now we can get to the hands. Go ahead, my brother. Um, brother, huh? No, I wrote that. Uh, brother Richard, you can take it off the screen now. <laughs> oh, it's on, it's, on, it's on the internet. It's on the internet. Go ahead. And we're going to have to ask 30 seconds, everybody. I just want to say quickly, uh, at the beginning, you kind of, we started with the creation story. We, you know, know that there's an order. When God created everything, he created with an order. Yes. But there have been people who have come on the scene after sin trying to change that order. Another thing about the uh, Buddhists and the Catholics, they have a lot in common. That's true. They have, a, I mean, but, but that on, ain't the truth. No, but hold up. That's not hold the whole up. truth. On the surface, there's one strong symbol that they have in common, and that's their prayer beads, mm. as well as sun worship. Yep, and it's all tied in. Who else had their hand up? Yes, 30 seconds. Um, the other thing they have in common, you got to remember, there's only one religion on the face of this planet that does not believe that you continue to live after you die. Mm. And that's the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Exactly. Every other one says, yes, you do. You live in some other form of life, whatever. Right. But that is the original lie that Satan first yeah. brought out. Um, I got you. The, the, the other thing is, most of them, they really are a religion by works. You are saved by that's your works. works. That's right. It isn't, it isn't by faith in Jesus Christ. Right. It is by works. So... When, and and the, the last point I would like to make is when it comes to bringing all these religions together, there is someone else that has already appeared, supposedly, whether they want to call him a god or whatever, but he's called the Maitreya. He also has a forerunner called Benjamin Krem, right? And according to them, God has come into every religion. He, you see? Wow. So you, bring, you can bring all the religions together and say, then you have one that comes and says, now I gave a little bit of truth to everyone, but now I'm going to bring it all together. They got mm. it all set up. Satan knows They got it all set up. And, and, and the great controversy, I'm going to try to 
I'll find you this statement. Ellen White says in Great Controversy, page 572, this is what Ellen G. White says. The spirit of prophecy says in Great Controversy, page 572, that the, she says, the papacy is well adapted to meet the wants of all these. The papacy is prepared for two classes of mankind. How many classes? Two class, embracing nearly the whole world. Those who will be saved by their merits or by their works. That's all those false religions, brothers and sisters. And those who would rather be saved in their sins. Here is the secret of its power. Great Controversy 572 says that the Catholic Church meets those who wants to be saved by their works. So what happens is Buddhism, any religion that rejects Christ as Savior and Lord is a worse religion. Am I right, somebody? Because you do prayer and meritorious deeds to get favored with God, but Christianity teaches you don't work your way to salvation. You accept the salvation provided by the atonement of Christ. Am I right, somebody? So the Catholic Church is, it, man, they're going to accept this Catholic thing, and when all the demons of spirits, the Buddhist, Confucius come, when Satan comes as Confucius, to those who worship Confucius. And when Satan personates Allah, I'm the Allah of the Bible. We need to follow the virgin man. Oh, when spiritualism comes, it's going to take everybody. Do you understand this right here? And understand this. This can happen any year from now. In such an hour as we think not, the Son of Man is going to come. Now, Let's go to the screen right here. I want you to hear what Ted Wilson concluded. Now, what he said here is absolutely the truth. And this is our mission as Seventh-day Adventists. Now, yeah, that flag was a mistake, but what he said here was the truth about the latter rain. Listen to what Ted Wilson says. You see division presidents seated in front of these flags. Our mission is to take the gospel to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people around this globe. We have yet a work to do. And beyond that, in all the countries that have been entered, we still have much to do. My brothers and sisters, we need to pray earnestly for the latter reign of the Holy Spirit when God's work will go like wildfire soon yes jesus will come that and, and i agree with that we need to receive you can take it off of the screen my brother we need to receive the latter rain to finish the work i, I got you sister bob brothers and sisters those vatican leaders need to be reached again. They've already been reached, but they're going to have to be reached again. You don't, don't you think that they're not watching? And I'm not, they, they may not know about state line, but trust me. You think, you think the papers seen them know about state line? Maybe I'm underestimating, but they know what we believe. And if the, if the rumor is true that there has been Jesuit infiltration, they already know what we believe, brothers and sisters. But God is going to give them another chance. When the latter rain falls upon us as seven day events and the work goes forth with wildfire, there are going to be many Catholic priests leaving the, leaving the Catholic Church. And they will join up with the seven day events church. Years ago, C.D. Brooks preached a sermon called What's on Your Mind? That was a powerful sermon on the sanctuary. I had that. That was the first sermon I ever had memorized. I, could, I, mean, I knew that sermon. I used to listen to that sermon so much. I memorized that sermon, even how he said, how he said it from the beginning to the end. Yeah, I, I don't have that memorized. But let me tell you this right here. Amen. He talked about a story where um, the leader of the LNG White Estate at that time was doing seminars on receiving the latter rain. So he did it at a church, and some members in a certain state took him at it. And they started praying every day for the latter rain. And he said, one, and, the, and the man from the White State testified that a great miracle occurred that a certain year in the month of May of that year, 1989, a Catholic bishop 
was baptized into the seven day of his church. And not only that, and he said, not only did the deacon, not only did the um, bishop get baptized, but one of the deacons of the Catholic church got baptized, brothers and sisters, in that Adventist church. We need that power, brothers and sisters. We have the knowledge. We know. We have the knowledge. We have the knowledge to inform everybody, but we need the power to convert people. Do you understand this right here? See, the Catholics that know what we believe, they've been reached, but the power of God has not penetrated their hearts for them to see the need to come out of her, my people, brothers and sisters. The Bible says that a bishop and a priest should be the husband of one wife. That's right. The Pope can get married, brothers and sisters, if he wanted to, and it not be a sin. That should tell you right there. The Bible says, call no man your father upon the earth. But yet, they still call the Pope the Holy Father. Uh, but see, what's happening is, is that you got people in the hierarchy who are not connecting the dots together. And we need to re-reach them, not just reach them. They already know what we believe. And it's going to come when the power of God falls. Sister Bob, go ahead. Sister I, Bob, I'm, I got you, I'm, Sister I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, in the beginning of this last clip here, it said that these people are representatives of uh, these um, countries that have not been met, reached. But um, if that is so, that means that that young man that's holding that flag there, he is a representative of the Vatican as, as, as Seventh-day Adventists. What came to my mind when I heard that, that he is a Seventh-day Adventist. I mean, it, it, maybe I wow. heard wrong, but at the beginning of that, of, of, of um, Ted Wilson's talk, he said, seems like those people there are like the conference heads or the church heads depending on what countries they are yes all right so he is the head of the seventh-day adventist of the vatican say what Wait, hold on, i don't I, know I, I, but I, no, that, no no hold on hold on what did you say that last talk there from ted wilson They're talking about the yes. division leaders. Also talking about the division. All right. Okay. Also so that young man leaders. is a division leader. Not holding the flag. No, 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 no. He talking about no, no. What happened was they were the, the people that were sitting down were division. Oh, leaders. all right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What's your question? Can you put, give, the, give the microphone? Yeah. So we're saying that Ted Wilson is responsible for that flag. That is he re is Ted Wilson responsible for that flag being yeah, up? Yes. Let me ask you a question. If 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 I had the Vatican flag yeah, you're up in here with all if I if we had our little flag ceremony, say we had a flag ceremony here and all the flags of all the people, whatever state you're from, whatever country you're from, Kentucky, California, Alabama, uh, New York, Connecticut, um, Trinidad, Jamaica, all the people and I had a Vatican flag up in here, would we, would I be responsible? Yes. yes. Okay, what would you, you think? Yes. Okay what, okay. what would you think, brothers and sisters? Like, why is Pastor Ola Tunji flying a Vatican flag at State Line Seven Day of His Church? Yeah, you would. You would do that. Now, I have a special announcement to make. I got a special announcement to make to all of you that are watching. I said we wasn't going to have a Zoom meeting, but we are going to have one. We're going to have a Zoom meeting in 30 minutes. Hold on. I'm going to get to you in a second. Brother Richard, can you put it up on the screen right now? Can you put it up? Special Sunday Law update in 30 minutes. Amen. <laughs> Tonight at 7.30 p.m. It's almost 7 o'clock. And I know that some of y'all are ready to go home, right? Brother Mike, I could stay here all night long and do this. But look at what it says here. <laughs> Special Sunday Law update. In 30 minutes, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, tonight. All right. 
So I'm gonna turn the light. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay right here and do it. And you can you if you you can you can turn it on on Zoom in your car. To, amen. Tonight at seven thirty. Amen. I was supposed to go to Birmingham, but my wife's coming back up, so that means I can do it now. Amen. So what happens is special Sunday law update on Zoom tonight at what time? Seven thirty. Right now it's six fifty eight, which means in thirty two minutes we're gonna come back on for another. Sunday law of day. Yes, my brother. We're going to leave it up on there. I want you to just write that down. All of you that are watching right now on YouTube, you need to come on because we're going to finish this talk, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, if you had all these flags and you had the Vatican flag in here, you'd have to have a pretty good reason. And I would ask you why you would have it. Yeah, why, Pastor O, why are you doing this? And, and, and if I told you, it, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be it wouldn't be any, re it wouldn't be a good reason, am I right? You would say, um, yes, yeah, so he must have had a nervous breakdown, right? All right? The pastor must have had a very, on, on, yeah, yeah, so this is deep. Now, for those of you on YouTube, we're getting ready, we're putting the announcement. Uh, come join us in 30 minutes, meeting ID. Hold on, meeting ID 702-029-6702. All right, brothers and sisters, we about to come on in just a minute. We're going to finish this thing tonight. Amen. Praise the man. 703-029-6702. Oh, we had so many people on last week. We're going to come on. We're not going to wait till 8. We're just going to come on. We're just going to come right on. Amen. Amen. So, Brother Richard, you, you got it on the screen? Hey, Richard, you got it on the screen? It's on the screen. It, it's, it's, it doesn't say that here. But um, what happens is we got to do this, brothers and sisters. You know, it's all about presence. It's all about getting the truth out. Amen. All right. Yes, we need you to come on. Yeah, put it on the screen. Okay. All of you that are watching on the screen, we're going to come on in 30 minutes on Zoom. And for those of you in Huntsville, we're going to meet you tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Amen. Amen. At the new church plant. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we're going to get this present truth in time, latter day, latter rain message out to the whole world. Does somebody need to say anything? Did you have something you want to say already? Okay. Okay. Oh, you have to say, go ahead, Cliff. Well, and for those of you, we're going to be meeting in less than 30 minutes. So you need to come on right after. Yes. Go ahead. At the, at the end of the day. There are going to be Adventists jumping out the ship. And the other ones that are in Babylon will come in. Yes. Now, which vessel will you stay in? With Jesus in the vessel, we could smile at the storm. Now, which vessel are you going to stay in? Because there are a lot of us going to jump ship at the last minute. And there's going to be a last minute rush at the 11th hour. Be careful. Be very careful. Which boat? Will you stay in? Amen. Yes. So for those of you that are looking online, we have a special Sunday Law update on Zoom at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you are in New York, it is 8 o'clock. It is 8.30 your time. Me in Alabama and most of us live in the Central Coast time. Central Coast. Central Standard Time. The Zoom meeting ID is 703-029-6702. The same when you came on last week. Brother Richard, you can turn it back on us. And brothers and sisters, this is the part I hate. Where we got to leave. As you see, we, we've been doing this for almost three hours. But it felt like we just did it for two minutes. Amen. Don't you enjoy these Sunday Lord updates? I enjoy this, brothers and sisters. But we're going to come back at 7.30 in 25 more minutes. We're going to come back. And then next Sabbath, Conrad Vine's going to be here to give us the what, somebody? Straight testimony. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let's kneel and pray. And we're going to see you in 25 minutes on Zoom and on YouTube. Let us bow our, let us kneel for prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer, asking you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the early and latter rain. We ask that you give us strength and courage, Lord, to fight the battles of the Lord while champions are few. And we want to pray that you give us your grace and your glory and your strength. 
be with our special Sunday Law update as we meet for a few moments to talk about some matters of the heart. And we thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer until we meet on Zoom and on next week. And bring Conrad Vine here safely in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. We'll see you tonight, 7.30 on Zoom. So we're going to give you the straight testimony. Amen. God bless you. Until next time.